Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today with episode 218 of the Ham Radio Podcast. And it is me, Carrick, with ACG. And we are joined by a very special guest. Would you kindly introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, so I'm Cameron. Uh, just a big fan. Been around, been watching for a while now. Uh, happy to join. Look forward to it. Yeah, glad you're here. Excellent. This has been definitely weeks, months, months in the making, <laughs> yes. really. We've been talking back yeah. and forth on the patron messages for months now. <laughs> yeah, and, life uh, is crazy. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're glad to finally have you on, man. So welcome. Uh, we hope you enjoy your time here. I hope all the audience gives you a nice warm welcome like they always do with our guests. We appreciate you guys. And uh, if you want to be if you want to be awesome like Cameron here, what you can do is flick us a buck. You flick us a buck, you get the luck. Look at these rhymes. Just like Cameron, you get hop get to hop on the show. You get early access for a dollar. Um, you can listen on free feeds if that's not your thing. But uh, we do appreciate the support on mine and Carrick's Patreon. It does keep the lights on, keep the projects going, and uh, keeps us yapping about video games. Uh, anyway, as we do with every introduction, you know, I like to just check in with Carrick. See what he's working on. See what he's doing, and I'll share what I'm doing. So, Carrick, what's happening? Man? Um, so the Gears Five review is done. I'll probably be returning to that um, to discuss some of the multiplayer issues they had today because they, you know, servers going online. Yeah, yeah. You know, okay. Whenever you go online, you sort of have to relook at something. Uh, Greedfall comes on the ninth, and I'll be covering that, and then uh, probably some side videos. But I'm going to be playing a bunch of Plants vs. Zombies this weekend, too. Mm -hmm. Or Plants vs. Zombies 3 this weekend as well. I'd have I to ask to when get... you were just talking about it. Is that like an early access, a beta, or is that full, full it's, game? It's called the Founders Edition of the game. And it looks like it's got everything other than a couple modes. And they're adding a mode every week anyway, even once it's at full release. So it's one of those a pseudo ones. Wow. Yeah, they're at and the game's always sort of been known for that, um, for adding a bunch of stuff, including unfortunately micro. It is one of those games that's got like you know microtransactions. Yeah, stuff. I remember but, the second um, one had a yeah, problem. second one had a lot. Um, but uh, playing a bunch of that, that that's pretty much it for me. Okay. Yeah, for me, uh, <laughs> I tried really hard, guys, to get some reviews going. <laughs> no, no dice. Uh, we're we're still waiting on Greedfall. Apparently, I'm getting something soon. Um. Borderlands is next week. Uh, should be getting that a couple of days before launch. Obviously, both these games, unless Greedfall is a lot shorter than I think it is, which I doubt it is. Um, it's been said that it's going to be 30, 40 hours. Uh, I don't think I get that done for a review, and obviously I'm not going to get Borderlands 3 done for a review, but I should be getting them ahead enough to make content. So uh, you guys will be fine. It just won't be the fully produced review day and date like or, or ahead of launch like I really try my best with big launches to do uh but apologies on that um outside of that you know i don't feel like talking about it yet again but secret project work still are underway um so we'll leave it at that and uh we shift now into our introduction where we're going to talk about the banger of a direct nintendo had this september um yeah. i i went in with minimal expectations i'll admit because personally, I was like, all right, September, you know, you got three big games coming from Nintendo already. Um, that being Pokemon, Luigi's Mansion, and then we have Animal Crossing next year, which seems to be like their next huge one. Um, and it's like, okay, you know, that, that, like, what could you surround that with to make the show exciting? And it felt like it was just such a powerful role. Like, there was just constantly something surprising me. Um, I'll get into what, what I particularly liked in a second, but we'll start off with you, Cameron. Was there anything uh, that stuck out to you during uh, the Direct, whether you sat down to watch it or maybe you, you just looked at the announcements afterwards? Was there anything that, that really pumped you up or did you not care? All right. For uh, for me, the biggest thing that I saw that actually struck to my attention was uh, the Pokemon Sword and Shield. Oh, and really? it, it's, it's sticking to me in a weird way. I'm excited for it. But it's just got – I don't know how to describe it. It's just got a different feel to it than other games like like the, the camp system. And, I mean, it's not necessarily bad things. It's just I'm excited for it, but I'm hoping they don't try to do too much mm -hmm. with taking a simple game that has simple mechanics. And I, gotcha. I'm just I'm, – I'm nervous, but I'm also really excited for it. It looks awesome. I yeah. love my Switch. Yeah. See, <laughs> no, absolutely. I play that thing so much. I – with Pokemon for me, it's it's Moon that really 
made me fall back in love with it and care about it again. I'd gone many years like, oh, Pokemon, oh, Pokemon. Like, you know, not like I don't like it, but I'll play it, sure. Uh, to when I played Moon, I was like, wow, this is good again. You know, I thought Moon had some, like, uh, uh, you know, some serious moments in it. I thought the the world was good. The music was good. Uh, I enjoyed the story. Um, so it made me really excited when Sword and Shield was announced. Now, how do you feel about you know, some of the open world spaces in, in the new Pokemon? Or I guess open world might be a stretch, but open hub area spaces um, compared to what it used to be with the fixed camera. You know, it seems to go back and forth between that. Are you excited for it to really open up? Oh, yeah, I'm loving that. Um, I think that if they do it right, that it can be something innovative and change it in a certain way. And that's nothing to take away that the old games were necessarily bad, but, mm -hmm. you know, change isn't always necessarily bad. And if uh, they can find a way to do it in a good way that doesn't take away the Pokemon feel from it, then I think it can work out great. Yeah, I mean, I I'm excited for it in general. And I, I, what I've noticed with Pokemon is what they always do is they announce... Like, okay, new games come in, and then they start just peppering in these, like, little additions like we saw at the Direct where they're like, you can pet them and you can play oh, with shit. them. Like, they added Nintendogs into the Pokemon experience. I was like, okay, like, you know, they, they say that your Pokemon will, will perform better in battle, uh, and I hope that there's legitimate impacts there. I know sometimes they'll get, like, a little buff, and it's like, no, give us, like, something substantial, because otherwise these things that they add in Pokemon become gimmicky. Uh, like like this curry on rice thing, I, I hope yeah. that I hope that's actually you know something that's not just gimmicky, you know, but is actually useful. Like in yeah. Zelda, cooking was fun because of all the different effects that were provided through it. It's definitely wild. Yeah, Carrick, did you have anything that stuck out to you during the direct? During uh, uh, not just Pokemon, right? Just everything. anything. Yeah, anything from the direct. Um, well, two things. One. I, I saw somebody be like, oh, you know, the Switch is like a third person or a third party port machine. And I'm like, exactly, because it's already mm -hmm. got the first party exclusives nailed. Yeah. So <laughs> this is exactly this system. As two years ago, we joked, there's no way I would have thought the system would have had this much success. We've got a ton of shit coming out. I did laugh when I found out the Wii Fit was coming when the Switch Lite won't actually work with it. That's a whole nother <laughs> discussion. Um, I was I was Switch impressed with I was in, I was impressed with their uh, clamoring onto titles that are sort of cult classics. Um, Deadly Premonition, the fact that they're doing a sequel to that blew. I mean, it like my Discord exploded because there are a huge number of fans of the first one on my Discord, and that was cool to see. I just think they're nailing it all over. Not only the direct, but you know, like Pillars of Eternity, those kind of games. Mm -hmm. There's so many titles, and watching that direct and just seeing people. Just like, oh my god, this is coming out. Oh my, And it wasn't like, oh my god, a new Mario. But it, what it was, was it's filling out the library to where if I talk to somebody, and I'm like... There's something for everybody. There, Yeah, and you know, it used to be, oh, Sky, it's my favorite version of Skyrim. Or it's my favorite version of this. And mm -hmm. then pretty soon now, it's like, well, yeah, it's got those which are awesome. But it's also now got blah, blah, blah. And D uh, Divinity Original Sin just plopping down... <sighs> with cross-save support was that was that genius. was sort of a mind blow that was sort of a genius yeah it was sort yeah. of a mind blower to have people be all oh that's just available right now which i don't think they're the only ones who are doing that that right now kind of thing they're yeah. very good at being secretive but the cross-save was so was awesome. smart because it yeah. is enough for people to go buy it a second time and be like yep. okay i may not always want to play on my switch but now i can play on my pc and when i leave if i'm taking my yep. switch with me Dude, cross play cross or cross That's saves that are, are, are at the bare minimum would save me, I mean, so much time and even times I won't cover a game because it's not cross save. And I'll be like, you know what? I'm not going to fight through this title. Like, a, like de facto. For, 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 yeah, for all these yeah. games. I mean, oh my gosh, man. Like, but I'm also saying in this case of Divinity. That's a game that I always say its worst enemy. And it's not a problem per se, but its worst enemy is it's it's a a session of play that takes a while to gain momentum because it's every time you play it, it's such like a gargantuan task in my opinion. There's there's a lot of thought provided in the game, and you have to really think your way through these quests. And and combat is tough. And and sometimes you will do one battle and one quest, and it'll take you two hours in total. And you've essentially made progress but not a lot and and eventually you're like okay i gotta go do this or whatever and if you could just cross save that game off your ps4 and go to switch right um right i might, I might be wrong i have not looked into it but when i did see it it just mentions pc to to switch it is just pc to switch right okay now. yeah 
And I imagine that I mean, maybe they'll add it over time, but I think that would just be smart for a lot of these games that are doing third-party support. The same thing happens with, like, Mo Monster Hunter, and um, I just, all these games that come up, and I, I just don't want to play them, you know, mm -hmm. another, I don't want to grind another 40 hours or whatever. So the idea of that kind of stuff coming out. And I think just overall, it was an awesome direct. I mean, they they sort of nailed it, even with the Switch, uh, the uh, 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 Crash Bandicoot. They've so, they they did this in in Smash Brothers. They did this oh, thing banjo, where it was like banjo? or banjo. Thank you. Yeah. I was. He's got the same up. color. Anyway, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Um. And he's another mascot. Bonk. It, yeah. it, there's there were all these mascots at one time. It's just awesome. It's cool to see the support of all these style of games because Deadly Premonition is not a game I would have expected to see on the Switch. And then yeah, you have like your game? in depth. Deadly Premonition is like a third person crazy ass open city paranormal X Files game. And it's crazy. It's I heard one of it's just those so weird. It's good. It's Twin Peaks. It's X Files mixed together. Stranger Things all mixed together into one game. And you're like a, a detective or or a dude there investigating it. And janky but weird. You know that kind of weird. Almost like Yakuza kind of, when it first came out, kind of and people were like, um, like a detective drive. You can wow. drive around in the town. You investigative. Um, That's some battle. Strange. Yeah, it's but it's. It, dude, it, of all the games, you would, like I would just have never assumed number one, let alone would just be available, but that number two would even be coming. It's it's yeah. very cool. Yeah, that was that was wild because for me, I, I never played the first, so when it got announced, my Twitch chat was like, "Oh my god!" Like it wasn't even right. like hype. They were like, "It's are you serious?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, like, is this a so. joke? Yeah. That's how I felt when they did uh, Jedi. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that's how I felt. Oh, Je I, that's another one. Je Jedi. Jedi Knight. I sprung out of my seat. I was like, Holy insane. shit. I could not believe that they did that. Cameron, have you ever played the Jedi Knight series? Uh, I think I did when I was a kid. Very little. So I can't yeah. say that, like, embedded into it. <laughs> no, it's, but, it's uh, so good. <laughs> I yeah. love it, bro. I love the combat in that game. I mean, I'll admit I like Jedi Knight Jedi Academy the most, which is coming out next year. That's the one I care about. But the fact that uh, Outcast is coming out this year, uh, I'll probably carve out some time for that. That looks that looks to be just such a fun game. Those, those titles uh, were, were sort of made to imitate like when Doom was, you know, yeah. and, and Wolfenstein were you know sort of pi pioneering the FPS genre. And you'd start to see, to see like dark forces come out, and that would be like a another FPS, but it was in the Star Wars universe, so it had a little bit of an edge. Uh, it was just really cool to see those types of games, and and how you can see a lot of that DNA in Jedi Knight Two, Jedi Outcast, but then you go into third person, it's a completely different game when you take out the lightsaber. Um, really awesome set of titles for you know. I obviously made a whole video about it today as we record this on Friday, um, but for those who haven't checked it out, it, they they totally get my complete recommendation um now i know i know cameron had mentioned how he was really excited for pokemon but is there any other uh for both of you any other specific exclusives that were talked about like luigi's mansion off the bat uh i guess we could say overwatch in that version for the switch was there anything exclusive to this platform um that really got you pumped up uh not for me not for me that was probably all that stuck now, out. Is it just pokemon what about you carrick for anything else there I guess anything else that was exclusive, because we saw a lot of third-party oh, ports, you know, and so I wanted yeah. to like slim it down a little bit more. What, you know, did you care about Luigi's Mansion? Maybe. No, not so. It doesn't mean I won't try it out, but mm -hmm. no, not so much that. I, I think I was it comes out on Halloween. I think that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty smart. I, I think it was more just about, and I don't even want to say third-party, but it was it, there was just the breadth of it was pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. of the direct as a whole it was just yeah. there was in in fact there wasn't one title i was like wow i just kept going like what the fuck because <laughs> I, that could have easily been a good not a ton but a, a number of event announcement at, at an e3 like there were yeah, it, because there's a weird. cult classic around a couple of those titles and i think nintendo could have easily said we're going to do these a couple of these at e3 and so the fact that they're just blase about it is pretty cool well what's they're interesting like, is they had such a good e3 direct you know, mm -hmm. I thought they had such a fun show. I was like, wow, this is really good compared to the rest of E3. Of course, maybe that added a little bias to my opinion. Uh, but I thought, like, with the September Direct, you know, I, I follow a lot of Nintendo YouTubers. And, and they, they always, like, track, like, all the things they're doing. Like, Spawn Wave Media, you know, he's always, we've had him on the show. He's always on top of that shit. And, like, a lot of people he's friends with are. 
And, uh, you know, I'm watching them talk about it. I saw them talking about the SNES controller patent, and then they started speculating yeah. about SNES coming onto the Switch. And I was just like, oh, really? Like, oh, they'll probably hike up the price knowing Nintendo. Like, they'll do that give and take thing where they're like, here's the stuff you want. You're paying more. Exactly. Um, exactly. But to actually see them come out and be like, yeah, it's coming. Here's 20 games, a lot of them very good games, and we're not bumping the charge. Um, now, the trade off for that, they did say, I saw in an article today, that uh, we'll, we'll get onto the conversation about SNES Online now, is that the games aren't going to be monthly. It's going to be uh, it's going to be just released sporad sporadically. Like the the NES Online would every month get I think two new games, but now uh, they're not going to do two games for the NES, two games for the SNES, but instead just sporadically mm -hmm. do them. Uh, how do you guys feel about that approach? Now I think that maybe the balance that's required in order to keep the service from from upcharging more because if there's a demand at like four games a month, four games a month, four games a month, you're 48 games a year from these old platforms. Um, and you've got to make sure they work and there's an online functionality that has to tie in with it. Uh, so I just wanted to pick your guys' brains about it and, and see how you, how you felt about the change in, in service. Go ahead, Cameron. Uh, I think for me, the biggest thing would probably be about, like you said, like the system, you don't want it to, you don't want to get flooded with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and especially if there's issues. Um, but I think it would, I think consistency would probably be like the biggest thing for it because they're, they're, they're older games. So it's not like you're having to go play a bunch of 40, 50, 60 hour games over and over again. Unless they bring back Chrono Trigger. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know, personally that was also like before my time, you know, like I played right. uh, a shit ton of Mario. Mm -hmm. Um, but outside of that, it probably wouldn't appeal to me, so to say. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. Okay. Carrick? I, I think the um, the way they're releasing now, yeah, it, it, it's probably at some point when once you've released a bunch and then you get to sort of the back end, it reminds me of backwards compatibility on the Xbox. Where it was like they had these releases stagger, you know, they sort of knew what they were doing. And then after a while, you're digging deeper and you're like, okay, this is going to take us a little longer. So... Yeah. You know, there might be a gap here. I think that's completely fine. Yeah. Like, and I, I think it's awesome that they didn't raise the price, like you said. Like, those, all that to me seems like it's a per, it seems like, I don't know if Nintendo's listening, but it, those are all positive and they don't include what you said, which is the slap reach around that Nintendo is known for, which is like, look at this awesome thing, but it'll cost you this. Or yeah. look at this amazing thing, but guess the pro what? controller, it's $80. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you're just like, what the shit? Yeah, there was, there was none of that in this, which, again, probably one of the best, I don't know what you'd even call this thing, but the best roll, announcement. Reel of announcements. <laughs> B-roll I've ever seen, yeah. Yeah, it, it was really strong. I mean, I don't remember... Maybe it's because E3 left me so deprived, but I don't remember... Well, E3 and Gamescom, but I just don't remember the last type of show where I was, like, getting up for announcements. I really don't, because one of my biggest surprises during this Direct... And by the way, even though I had, like, 150 viewers, I think, at the time, like, the chat was silent during this one announcement. It was uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, which this is a series... Uh, it was an RPG, rather, that, that, that came to the Wii U at, like, the absolute end of its life. And right. I played it. And what, for those who don't know, Tokyo Mirage Sessions is a crossover between Fire Emblem and Persona. Originally, it was concepted to be uh, Fire Emblem and Pokemon, but they changed it. And it worked out really well. It's a really good game. Just, like, structurally, there's some issues. Like, uh, this isn't a spoiler, but, like, the end dungeon is just repeating the same bosses. You know, JRPG uh, fallacies, we'll call them. Mm -hmm. But overall, really good game, and it's got elements from both and ties them together well, and the combat system's unique and fun. And I've been saying for years, like, since the Switch got announced, I'm like, give this game a second life. Out of any game, this one deserved it. came at the tail end of the Wii U's life cycle. I, I would say probably I'd be shocked if 20,000 people played that game. And uh, to put it on the, on the Switch was a genius move because that is an announcement that, like I said, got me out of my chair, but... As I was mentioning, I had 150 people in the chat, and it was dead silent. No one was like, who cares? <laughs> it was so funny. But that was an announcement that, that oh, my God, really caught me off guard. Um, I, I just wanted to spin off topic for that real quick. But for the, the SNES Online, uh, I, I don't know if you guys had a chance to test it out yet. I was playing it last night with my friend. It is pretty crazy. Uh, you know, granted, these aren't, like, demanding games, but it's just crazy that, like, day and date – 
uh, it, how well the online functionality worked. We played Cr- Kirby's Dream Course, I think it's called, which mm-hmm. is this almost Kirby golf, Kirby pool game where where you're, you're playing two players, and so you're a Kirby, and you can line up your shot, and you have to like hit these objects around this like constructed map, and mm-hmm. uh, when you do, you'll get a star. But you're playing against someone, so if you shoot Kirby into another Kirby, um you'll stun them and also depending on how much power you put into your shot you start to use up energy which you can only replenish by hitting those targets i was just mentioning that give you food and so we were playing that and and you know like there wasn't a delay uh, or input lag rather uh it was all really good it was a lot of fun and we played uh what was it kirby something uh the side scroller for the snes I, i don't recall it but we played the first chapter of that and it was lag free. It was fun. Uh, it's amazing to get the couch co op experience that I never had a chance to. Because, like Sci Fi Man said, this was a little bit before my time. I played a lot of SNES, but it was mostly Turtles in Time. That was my game that I love to death. And if they add that to this system, I will. Oh, I don't care what people say about Konami. They, they got to figure out how to do this. But um, this was a little bit before my time where I didn't get a chance to experience all that couch co op fun. It was more so with the N64 for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so for me, it's amazing to be able to, to go back and, and do it with a friend online and, and experience that with these games. Does it allow for filters and stuff? Cause it is an emulator. Yes. Does there's it... like a CRTV okay. filter and stuff, a four by three. Yeah. You can, you can cool. change that all. It's yeah. It's, it's a really, it's, it's added the value that this, the system was really, really missing. I think it was great yes. though. What were we going to say, Cameron? Uh, I, I was gonna say, yeah, um, I, I, it, it definitely was way before <laughs> before I was even born. <laughs> but uh, you know, I still remember when I was a kid though, playing these games. You know, way after they were released, though, with like my grandma and my cousins, like in the living room on Saturdays after school or whenever, you know, having fun. So that's that's not really something you really get a whole lot of anymore. Mm-hmm. It seems like it's, it's sad in a way, but I mean. Yeah, so if, if you can bring that back, that nostalgia, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 really good. Uh, I I enjoyed it a lot. And for those who are wondering, I mean, it's twenty dollars a year. So at this point, you're getting a lot of NES games. Which you know, I mostly played Mario Golf with my friend. That was a lot of fun. Um, I played the Kirby game, something with Kirby and these this Nintendo Online thing. I swear, I it's because I never experienced Kirby because I, I like I only experienced it through Smash. I didn't know a thing about Kirby, and uh, so this was my chance to actually like play uh, and experience what I don't know. Is it a he she? What is it? Uh, Kirby? I don't yeah. know. I don't know either. Um, this this know. glob yeah. and what <laughs> what it did. <laughs> I never experienced that, so uh, this was my chance. Uh, but yeah, $20 a year, uh, like I said, it adds the value needed, and I'd say it's it's pretty worth it for, it's it, you know, what, how much is that? Divide by 12? I don't know, but it's only a couple bucks a month. Yeah. yeah. Not too bad. Dollar something. All right. All right. Let's move on to... Before we do, I oh. have to ask you a oh, question. I apologize, Carrick. You have more. That, no. Yeah, but it's it's not about that. It's about, I have forgotten to ask you every single podcast we've done. That light box behind you is fucking amazing. Thank you. And I've never asked you, how did you get it? And, like, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, well, yeah, I love it, too. Uh, actually, for starters, the story, because I can never make things simple. My girlfriend, um, she was watching one of my streams online, and she, it was, was it was it for Christmas? I, yeah, it was for Christmas, I believe. Um, she ordered me a gift, and, and she gave me one thing. And then uh, she was just like, your other gift will come later on. Uh, Mm. Because I ordered it and they're constructing. I'm like, okay. And she gave it to me. uh, And this is it. Uh, She got it from Etsy. Yeah, I figured it was an Etsy light box. Yeah, Yeah, it's it's awesome. And and it's amazing. She got it because she said, like, you know, your streams are good. But like the background's just so empty. She's like, you need Uh something sitting there. And so I started using it for streams. And then one day I sat down to make a video. And I was like, oh, I could just turn this on and have it sit there even if it's not like presented clear because sometimes my chair is so wide it blocks a right. little bit a little bit of right. it i just thought it added something enticing to it but yeah not i, 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 dig, I dig the fuck out of it and it's so funny because i've seen it all and i think we talked a little bit about it but i never really 
like paid that much attention. But the last like four podcasts, each time I see it, I'm like, oh, I gotta ask him. I gotta ask him. I figured it was Etsy because they're so good at making custom. Oh my god! You know, you can get you can pretty oh, much yeah. if if you want anything from Etsy, like a Destiny gun, it's on there. It's like insane. you can get anything. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's I an love amazing place. Of their decorations I use Etsy. at Etsy. Mm -hmm. They're Etsy insane. For the win. Yeah. For the win. That's how I got uh, the. I don't know if you saw on my Twitter those shadow boxes with like the old games. Yeah, in them, but the with the game records. cartridges in them. Etsy. Yep. 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 Yeah, it's Amazing. it's it's very awesome to see. Yeah, and because it, it gives you ideas. Because I saw those shadow boxes and I like moved it around, looked how it was made on the inside. I was like, I could do this. I'm not gonna sell them, but like I'm gonna make these now. I'm gonna take yeah, my old right. games and just <laughs> put them in there. Why the hell not at this point? Um, anyway. Now am I good to move to the next topic, Eric? Anything yeah, else? Yeah, I apologize. Cameron? Anything, anything else in your oh. background that that entices me like a child? I have cars. No. <laughs> 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 Nothing from you, nah, Cameron? Man. You're good? Okay. I'm good, man. All right, cool. I'm gonna start I'm gonna start doing that. I'm gonna call it the, the segue check. Just to make sure. Because I'll often yeah, just in, how, just how many times the last episode did I go like, all right, and then like you or boss would start talking, I'm like, okay, nope. Oh, there's process. always gonna be something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah for sure. All right, uh, topic three that we've got is Akumi Nakamura leaving Tango Gameworks. Now, th I don't think this would have been a huge deal, but she ascended to stardom this E3 when they came out and announced uh, Ghostwire Tokyo at the Bethesda E3 conference. Now, the reason this is also a big deal is because Shinji Mikami himself came onto stage and introduced her sort of as her you know his protege and was like you know this is the person to succeed me um that was the story that was uh why it was such a touching thing and then on top of that she had her her quirks on stage which everyone fell in love with um and now she's gone she left tango gameworks to go presumably either do her own thing or whatever but she was creative director on ghostwire tokyo and uh, i don't see a lot of people talking about this but we just saw tim willits leave id we talked about that on the show when it happened the week of we also just saw matt grandstaff who has been at bethesda's communication department oh excellent gosh. guy leave after i think 15 years we're seeing a lot of long and and akumi worked at Beth at tango for nine years as a concept artist and a uh and a, a creative director and this was her first project like leading the charge pretty much and now she's gone i've heard um, and I've seen other people citing sources saying that Zenimax has been quite overbearing about inserting stores. So my speculation, which I would say is somewhat accurate and is not guided by, not only guided by recent products they've released, but just based off what I'm seeing people say and what I've heard is that I think there was a conflict internally. I genuinely think there, there was a, you're putting a store in. No, I'm not. Okay. Here's, you know, we're not like, here's the door pretty much without firing her but they're like well we're putting the store in she was like well this is my product and i don't want to work on it so fuck this i'm out i'm gonna go somewhere where i don't have to do that that's my guess mind you speculation educated <laughs> speculation but speculation what do you gentlemen think were you shocked by this go ahead cameron all right okay yeah so i got a lot to say about this all right um, let's go this this was wild for me uh throughout the bethesda conference it was very boring to me i think is uh overall i mean there was, i was excited to see some of the stuff but overall i was i was pretty disappointed overall that was and that like was Commander like Keem on the uh on the phones <laughs> 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 definitely not <laughs> um she was the, the biggest part for me and it was not even necessarily the game it was just the energy that she showed for the game and it was like a passion for it and it was killer to be like whoa she's not here but for me i also when i'm looking at this you know she was the creative director and they were talking I, i'm still confused with what the hell the game is uh, mm -hmm. uh, entirely, uh, exactly how it plays out. And I guess that's just something we gotta wait and figure out. But I think it'd be different for me if it was like somebody working at Call of Duty, to where it's such an already set in stone genre. But if this is something entirely new, Very good and the point. creative director leaves, you know, I don't know how far along this is—two years, one year, six months—I really don't know. Um, I'm worried about what that can do to it because if you don't have a right track, you know, something similar like Anthem, you know, people leaving and coming back or whatever, you know, that whole mm. debacle. Uh, it worries me. I mean, I'm still excited. The game looks interesting. It, it did get my attention, but it leaving was it was pretty depressing. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm hoping what I want to be true is that she left because there was another opportunity, not because 
of what you said, but I'm I'm feeling like you're right. I'm feeling like you're I, right. But I, I feel like if like, there was another opportunity now that I'm I'm now that you've put it out there and I, I just hearing it makes me think of the tweet she posted where she said, If you want to work with me, here's my LinkedIn. Which yeah. to me that doesn't sound like I had another opportunity. It was like I'm out. <laughs> Who can I work for? Yeah, yeah it was it, it's it, it's I, it really, you know, upsets me in a way. Uh, mm. not not nothing against her, you know. I want her to do whatever she feels is best yeah. for her, her family, her life, you know, because that comes first before making me happy playing her video games. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I really do think you're right. You know, there's a trend going towards not just necessarily making a good game, because I really think these developers want to make good games. Who said, you know what, let's just make a bad game. But, uh, you know, I, corporate is killing it, man. I, I feel like you're right about that. Yeah, sadly. Carrick, any input? No, nothing really, Dad. Uh, I mean, other than what you guys have said, because it just that. The, you think the it smells tweet, fishy? Rather, we'll start there. Yeah, the tw those tweets. Whenever anybody there, so there's sort of a negative connotation. If if anyone wants to work with me, uh -huh. that indicates there's a chance that yeah, she was let go because that that there's sort of psychological behind that of like, well, mm -hmm. these people don't want to work with me. So if anybody out there does want to, um, and like you said, the void, there's no new thing popping up because we see that a lot of times. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm watch out in a week. I'll, ex I'll, I'll announce my new thing, which you see all the time. So, I mean, I don't really have anything to add because I don't think any of that's wrong. I just, I think all that's probably, probably right. I don't know about the store thing, but it seems like that would be the major thing mm -hmm. would be the store. Additionally, it could also be, maybe this is her first time and we do have to factor in the fact that uh, she may not have liked it. Uh, I mean, there is, a, even talking to Leem, who was the producer, uh, one of the producers for Vermintide, you know, he went on, he left uh, Fat Shark, and it, it, it's pretty tough to be a producer. It's pretty tough because you are everybody. Like, he described to me what his job was, and I was like, oh, damn. Mm -hmm. Like, damn, like, you're talking, those are the people that work John Carmack hours. You know what I mean? So, because they're answering to everybody. So there's also the chance that it, it was a combination of things, like burnout, not wanting to do it. I think the store thing sounds accurate because we do sort of know that that's what they want, you know, that's what they want to do. Yeah, and even if you disagree, right, like I think the products just show it. You look at Wolfenstein, Rage, Fallout 76, just as a couple of examples that come up and each of those has one thing in common. 76 makes a little more sense, right? It's, it's an online only title. Um, but Creation Club Edition. Um, you know, Rage didn't make any sense to me. It still yeah. doesn't. Even though I no, didn't Rage hate didn't it. And Wolfenstein it didn't. didn't make any. Yeah, yeah. It did. It, it, it seemed mm -hmm. arbitrarily there. And what's sad is both those games. Well, I, I love Rage too. But when it comes to like Wolfenstein Youngblood, um, it's not even like the store that is is I think damaging these games. It becomes like this additional punching point for a product that's flawed, right? Because you have, for, we'll, we'll keep on Wolfenstein, you have this game that uh, wasn't balanced right, uh, enemies got very spongy, you could tell it wasn't tested as much, uh, the, the going back and forth through areas could be a little repetitive, and, uh, and in turn, that all becomes annoying, and then you see the store there that's just, it serves no purpose, it's just there, and you're like, why? Why is this here? Um, you know, that's the type of stuff that doesn't help these games out at all. And because um, you don't see any goodwill towards the consumer, any any good natured acts that, that you kind of just feel like they're money trees and they're trying to shake it loose to something. Um, and it becomes frustrating because then, you know, certain things that uh, we always talk character about things that like the good and bad and how it balances out were something so good that uh, when we're reviewing a game, I don't want to say you overlook it, but it, it doesn't hold as much weight. Uh, negatively to mention because some of the good is just so good, right? So, like, yeah. um, I think that Bethesda, in turn, and Zenimax need to realize that these stores aren't helping them out critically either because uh, people are starting to factor it in uh, where they're like, yeah, you know, they, they, you know, like oh, these frustrations amounted. And then I saw the store. You know, it's like that extra talking yeah. point that does, yep. that's negatively entailed. And I know that they're probably making a lot of money off of it. Maybe it's not impacting them at all. But I just feel like it's a slippery slope. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, I I didn't even really know what the game was either. I mean, I did, you know you saw those trailers and I read some stuff, but 
I didn't really know exactly what the game was either. So in a weird way, it was probably my most exciting trailer from them during their video or during mm -hmm. their uh, announcement. Um, but at the same time, also the one that at least for me is the easiest to let go mm -hmm. because I didn't get attached to it in, in I wasn't able to, <laughs> like that, I yeah. just, I flatly, there wasn't the data out there to get attached to. Yeah. So. There's nothing to um, it outside of a personality. So when, when all is said and done, if they continue making it, that'll be the more interesting thing now is if they continue making it, like what changes, what doesn't, cause they're in charge. The, the producer at her level is in charge of everything. Like even not only the graphics, but how the graphics interact on a jump. And then that adjusts the gameplay because the jump animation needs to be slowed down a little bit to make it more look more epic or whatever. So there's all these things and without her there. Um, who's stepping in and is the game going to continue? I mean, that's probably a big question too. Yeah, I, I, mean, I hope, I don't know, guys. Like, that's the question. Do we, I don't necessarily want the game to not continue because that means other people who are just an artist, right, mm -hmm. it, it, at, his, at his desk also is impacted just because one person leaves. That also bothers me because I hate to see where people are linchpinned so much that if one if if they leave, then everybody loses their job. That would that yeah. also sucks. Yeah, I don't think that would happen. I just I you hope know, when you're creative director, you know, you're kind of the in in the middle. You're working with the artists. You're working with the writers. You're working with you know story directors and so on. Like there's just so many pieces that you're working with because you're literally the name of the. The, the title you have you're directing the creation right and it's just like that's a hard spot to step in and pick up the pieces for uh, especially if you maybe someone fills in and they're like yeah you know i i like akumi's vision but we're gonna change this this that and it's like oh but we were working on this this that they're like it, it just becomes like a no one's on the same page i think it's hard yeah. to get into a rhythm at that point especially when you're at a i don't know how big the studio is but it, it's sizable enough where that's a lot of people to manage um I don't know. It doesn't sit with me well. I just I feel like when you have someone like Shinji Mikami introducing you on stage, uh, there there's a a sign there of passing the torch, um, and it's been said in multiple articles that you know she was sort of like his you know his apprentice, and uh, he was her mentor kind of thing. It's Has very he tweeted anything, Maddie? Shinji? Has he tweeted anything oh, since this I happened? I don't know. I think because that would be a good Twitter. thing to check on is if if he's, he's also you know, he probably does. Because, like, if he's, you, you know, like, if he said something, sometimes you can glean something off of their response. Let's see here. Uh, official English Twitter of Shinji Mikami. He has not tweeted since 2013. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's, that's scratch that. Yeah. That does make sense, though. That does make sense. Yeah, but Tango themselves said uh, that they continue to be led by the legendary Shinji Mikami and his talented team in the development of Ghostwire Tokyo. So he still had a hand in this game, but this seemed to be like her thing. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure something happened there. Uh, she put it out there in a pretty positive light, though, and was also mentioning today how she's going to ZeniMax to thank them, which uh, but this was like oh, after 24 hours after kind of thing where I was like, hmm. When, she like, she's oh. going to Zenimax to thank them? Yes, I will read the exact tweet in one sec. I got it right here. Uh, not Ikuni, Ikumi. Here we are. She said, It's hard to overstate my satisfaction. Many Zenimax fellows have personally sent uh, Sayonara a message to me. Thank you so much. She put this in quotes. Hurricane 193, and mind you, her handle is uh nakamura 193 so i don't know if that means anything uh we'll land on zenimax at the end of this month it teams should raise the security level to the maximum can't stop me take care ha 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 i'm going to see zenimax fellows this month to tell them about my express about my express for gratitude obviously there's a bit of a language barrier uh and then someone from bethesda who's a video producer said that they couldn't wait to see her so she hmm. is visiting them at the end of the month for something some people thought that meant that she's splitting off and creating her own studio or not some people one person actually responded in the way she wrote it they were like are you teasing your own studio right well that's what i'm wondering Max? yeah she might also be meaning hurricane as in she's a and die if she's got a bunch of energy you'll we, we you call those at work you'll be like that person's a hurricane because they're just 
full mm-hmm. of energy. Maybe she means the hurricane is coming at the end of this month when I return to Zenimax to thank everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, that's what, what I, that's what our, that's what I'm taking from. Yeah, because yeah. you put it Hurricane 193 in quotes instead yeah. of Nakamura 193, so it's like she's the, the hurricane. that is a pretty strange tweet from somebody who left under bad circumstances. I will yeah. say that that most of the time people will not tweet like you're just like don't tweet mm-hmm. at all, mm-hmm. um, anything like that. Um, and in fact, when we were letting people go at my job, you know, they were a part of the, your signing leaving when you would sign your NDAs. It'd be like. You're not allowed to tweet about this, blah blah blah. I'm, I, I'm just wondering if they even had that. You know? hmm. So yeah, it's it's it get that is almost makes it more mysterious, to be mm-hmm. honest, to me. Yeah. All right. Segway check. Are we all clear? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. It's so sad. about the yes, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All good in the clear. So we move on to Cyberpunk 2077 which is getting multiplayer after launch. Let's read the following tweets. Yes, Cameron, I'm with you. That's a, it's a little bit of a yawner. Uh, <laughs> CD Project Red wrote, Hold on, I have to burp. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> Until now, the only thing we said about multiplayer was that it was in research and development. As we're getting closer to launching single-player Cyberpunk 2077 in April 2020, we'd like to confirm that multiplayer is in the works. If you feel like lending us our skills, please apply, and they have a link. Uh, in a follow-up tweet, hold on, it's not, why is it not on the article? There's a one out of two. Uh, oh no, hold on. Anyway, we'll, we'll start it there as I, I, as I bring up the, the follow-up tweet. Um, but let's hear from you gentlemen. What do you think about multiplayer hitting cyberpunk? You want to go Cameron or you want me to? Yeah, I got some, I got some stuff to say about it. Um, all right. So I'm not a huge, I like, I, first off, I'm excited for cyberpunk, but, mm-hmm. uh, Cyberpunk, but I'm not going to be here to be able to play it when it releases. I'll be at basic training. But uh, I, I, I don't have an emotional attachment to it yet. Mm. So I've I've seen like Twitter, Instagram, whatever. People are worried about, you know, I, I've seen some people worry about like a 76 to Fallout 4 debacle. Like, oh well, they're just, like it's just to get money or whatever. And for me personally, I, I think it could go bad really quick. Uh, just like a lot of ideas can, mm-hmm. but someone said something like, "If they could do something like a GTA Online type thing, where it was just the open world and they had all these kind, of, all these cool things to do, I think that'd be interesting." Because the universe looks amazing. I don't think I've seen anybody doubt that that mm-hmm. the entire world space just looks amazing. You know, not just graphically, but it just sounds graphically. You feel like it's something new. Um, all right. So I think it could be interesting, but you know, if they were gonna do, if they do this, I would like for like an online type thing. I don't know how they do it, but I don't get paid to make the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, they could also, you know, they could just be meaning like team deathmatch or little game modes. Uh, but for, for me, I would love to see something like a GTA Online if it comes out. But I hope it doesn't lore-wise or anything mess with the single player feature i hope it doesn't take the focus away of what cyberpunk appears to be to us i don't think it will because like they've said it's coming after the single player stuff and they want to focus on single player first but just them talking about it like that they know people are worried you know because if they weren't they would just be like yeah we got a game coming out it's got single player and multiplayer they're like listen you're getting the single player first and we're going to work on single player stuff and then later down the road we'll let you see what we're talking about okay. so i mean i I'm excited, but nervous at the same time, just like, you know, everything. <laughs> the follow-up tweet says, the plan for now is to deliver Cyberpunk 2077 in April, then follow up with DLCs, which are free, they also mention, and single-player content. And once we're done, they're specific about that, invite you for some multiplayer action. Yeah, that's what I was, that's the tweet I was talking about. Right. So, the plan is single-player launch, single-player DLC, complete the single-player content plans, and then move on to multiplayer. Um, now, I have a, a theory about this whole thing because we just saw a lot of gameplay for Cyberpunk 2077. Not as much as last year, but we saw a lot. And a lot of that conversation, instead of last year, where it dominated E3, everyone was hyped, it was insane, it looked great, this year it's received a little bit more of a critical eye and we're seeing more people talk which it hasn't been but we're seeing people talk downgrade 
Uh, more notably, though, is changed features like the cutscenes, like the RPG elements and the HUD, all notably different. HUD makes a little more sense, but RPG elements condensed. Mentioned this in my video. And also, they do, CD Projekt Red themselves, confirm that cutscenes will be handled differently, all first person. And so the conversation has really been dominated about that. In fact, I did not see many people on my feed, personally on Twitter, or in general in trending, talking about this game. And wow, the gameplay, like, it was usually, it looks good, but... Uh, which is is actually very strange for CD Projekt Red. And so my theory is, why are you talking about when, especially when you're doing not only the full game, which doesn't come out for another seven months, if my math's correct. Yes, yeah, seven months. And then you have single-player DLC. And then after all of that, you're going to be doing multiplayer. Why are we talking multiplayer now? Well, my theory is that they're trying to divert a little bit, change the course of the conversation. And especially when that's announced in the same breath as single player DLC, DLC free, multiplayer later, it starts sparking that, oh, they get it. You know, they, CD Projekt Red gets it. And they do get it. I'll never take that away from them. They, they, they understand their consumers more than most companies. But I just can't help but get that inkling based off how critical people have been about their gameplay that they maybe wanted to change course on, on the conversation of, of what, where their gameplay was going. Thoughts, gentlemen, or am I crazy? I didn't really. S I saw a little bit of a downgrade uh, discussion, but we kibosh that usually because that's how development works. Like games yeah. will look better, look worse. Um, I saw the soda cans during the stream, and there were some graphical issues here and there. Um, the RPG changes, like you said, changes to the first person um, versus third, which, like to me, I have no care whatsoever about the the viewpoint of how they do those cutscenes. It's, like it's going to be up to them. That's I like issue. seeing my character. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I, I and I, do, I definitely do, but at the same time, I just don't care. Um, I think when it comes down to it, to me, it just seemed like a tweet. I don't know. I just didn't, I didn't read. It's, it, it's not, we know that that PR account is actually not even handled by the devs. So it's like, to me, it yeah, just seemed CD like, Project read themselves. yeah, it just seemed like here's a, Here's a post about what we're doing. Multiplayer was, remember, hinted at, and people were talking about it, and that was a question. So maybe they were just like, these are the things we're working about. I honestly hear that tweet and think maybe they're just trying to indicate they're not focusing on multiplayer and splitting resources away until the single player is done. So you can read it both ways. You can read it as a I negative. I guess it's just they say it. it's in the works, so they are working on it now. Yeah, side companies working on that right now. Mm -hmm. It's not them. Oh, it's not? Or okay. It's, not their primary. I should say it's not their primary team that is working on Cyberpunk for uh, the the single player is mm -hmm. not the same teamwork. Yeah, that wasn't really uh, it personally. It wasn't my concern because, for example, I I know it's probably not a good one, but like Gwent, like while they worked on that and yeah, Witcher right. three, like Gwent, Gwent's still good. You know, I know it's an established oh, framework, but also you owned a three hundred and sixty, right? Mm -hmm. Did you ever do sh Cyber? Uh, uh, I just looked it up so I could ask you this. Uh, did you ever do Shadowrun? Uh, no, I've actually never played that. We heard uh, so Boss talk about that a lot last week. Yeah, so Shadowrun is an incredible uh, uh, shooter that was on the 360, but people were mad because its viewpoint was different, <laughs> funny enough, and that it did some other stuff and it was a multiplayer shooter, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody, People were having difficulty with it. However, it's a cult classic, and I could absolutely see cyberpunk doing that kind of thing where it's like looking at the, that game and go because they are connected narratively by a great deal or not narrative but thematically by a great deal i could see them certainly looking at that and saying you know that's what we want to do but it's not connected to the cyberpunk main game mm -hmm. so it, it is something completely separate and then additionally is it going to be an open world or is it going to be a virtual world in their already virtual world? Which is what I think it'll be. I think I it'll be there like... there was a rumor way before, like two years before we even got a reveal for this, the re-reveal rather for this game. And they were talking about how um, Cyberpunk would have like some type of hub where you could get together and play like mini games together and stuff like a card yeah. game. And, and yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they took that route first before. Either they... would I, because remember, they're talking about cyber jackers and all of their trailers and stuff. And like, mm -hmm. you can go into the cyber world. It's like, what if it is a copy of your world, but they pretend it's in a, you know, it's a game mm -hmm. in, in, in cyberpunks. We're almost like a mini game is fishing in Red yeah. Dead, you know, but this is like a full shooter. And I, and, and they could add that into the main game. Like, um, like Cameron was saying as well as like a, a, a an online GTA too. Yeah. It's possible I'm looking too deep, but I just think the timing's funny. 
It is. It, you are right. It's not from Cyberpunk's Twitter. Um, it is from CD Projekt, right? But I just, I don't know. I'm not saying it was over overly negative. I just thought it was critical, which there's which there's a difference, obviously. Overly critical. You mean you, the reactions you were seeing were critical? Yeah, like a lot tweet? of people were talking down, like talking about was there a down? Oh no, I saw that for yeah, sure. You yeah, you know, like it was just critical. I, I think to to you know, okay, it's not the utmost insane praise that usually CD Projekt Red right, understandably garners in many ways. I I think they just shifted course a little bit. They were like, okay, like here's, you know, let's let's let them know, as you said, you know, let's let them know, hey, DLC, not in the works. We're working on multiplayer. We're not dive, you know, like changing uh, or dive, splitting yeah, teams. Yeah, right. resources. Or yeah, whatever. like here's here's the good stuff we're doing. I just, I think this, like, okay, here's the thing. If they didn't just drop gameplay in in the last week, I'd be like, I'd, I'd be like, okay, this is this is notable news. But this is notable news that that you could add to your marketing cycle, and more so than anything, when you start talking DLC. The launch of DLC, um, it being free, post-launch plans, that type of stuff. That's closer to the game's actual launch because the just the way a consumer works in many ways, it's always about, okay, how long are you going to keep me attached to this game? What are you bringing to the table? And they're telling us that now. But remember, you and I talked about this something that confused us. And this was like three podcasts ago. We were confused about the timing of the Twitch video as well. We were remember we've talked about being confused about the timing for like how they're doing their stuff. Mm. So it's like everything to me has been confusing. Mm. Fifteen minute of video, it's like, and then some guys talking. So that was gonna because I I think it was prior to because we were both gonna stream it. I think it was the podcast prior to where we were both like that. This timing, what's mm -hmm. it gonna be? And because you and I were yeah. like, and we were taking guesses on what we thought right. it would actually be versus what it was. So to me, agreed. Yeah, their timing. The timing of the tweet, the timing of that video, none of it actually makes sense unless the rumor is true, and there was a big rumor, that there was actually going to be a mini demo available. And they are trying to, in some way, like get people more and more excited, and there's going to be like a mini demo available. There was a legit rumor about that. Really? I've like, never heard that. Yeah, there was a legit rumor that there was going to... And when I say legit rumors, and it was picked up by multiple people. It wasn't just like, hey, it was that they were going to do something different, and the... There, and in fact, uh, in our discords, there were people saying, wasn't there a demo popping? And we were like, no, it's not a demo. It's the video that was already seen, blah, blah, blah. But people kept dropping the word demo. And the reason why is because there were rumors that there was a demo that was going to be in some way given out to people uh, that was like a very small snippet of something that wow. you were able to do. Um, whether that's true or not, I just think overall, it, it, all the timing is weird. The mm -hmm. Twitch video stream still confuses me to this like i have no clue why we got it I, I mean why now like explain to me why this month or last month we got that i guess it's because they said they wanted to make their resources last for for marketing but then they kind of got rid of that and edited this whole thing so they essentially made more work for themselves so exactly yeah, yeah. that that's why like i, I want to make sure i mention that because a lot of people will be like well this is why character it's like well, no because if we went with because it actually excuse, created more yeah they created more work yeah. for their team doing it this way because that was not like a simple jump cut edit that was like here's here's graphics and everything right. that was their that was their plan for a while it was yeah, obvious it's... and that's that's why i i took a little more of a not like i didn't initially but thought was process a more towards the twitter yeah yeah it just it was yeah. it was different for me when i approached it. i was like this is exciting but like something's different here there there's something going on underneath the surface and i am wise to it i'm on to you cd project red segway check uh actually i got one thing to say go for it <laughs> uh <laughs> so for so when this whole thing started getting announced and everything uh i, I didn't hop on at first the hype train mm -hmm. because uh respectable fallout for it, fallout for it uh, <laughs> uh but that's, that's a side sorry but, um you know i, I love anticipating games coming out and i love to look at games and say okay yeah i can't this looks like a good game but i didn't want to look too far into it and get everybody else's opinions and then have this image for the game and then get it be like this is not at all what i was expecting so i've been so since from the start i haven't looked into it cyberpunk too much at all because i'm very excited for it but i didn't mm -hmm. want to get on the whole train uh so the whole graphics thing i didn't even notice i'm not even yeah. like I'm, I, I'm not trying to sound uh like it's not a deal or whatever, but because I didn't look at it so much to begin with, 
and because I don't look it up online a lot and I don't look into it, I didn't even think that was an issue until uh, I watched your video on it. And I was like, well, now that he now that he says that, that does kind of make sense. But uh, mm. yeah, that's that. I think but, a lot of people had that approach when they came in that video. Yeah, because I think this game has a lot of potential, so I didn't look into it too much. The biggest thing for me that worries me from what's been said is the RPG thing. You know, if the graphics get dumbed down some a little, I mean, it you know, it sucks, but I mean, the game's still gonna look good. I mean, they're not right. the game's not gonna look like Minecraft. Uh, <laughs> so <That was> beautiful. <laughs> so I mean, there's a standard you want to be released with it, but uh, I didn't look too far into it to begin with, and I, now if these situations like this, I'm glad that I didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, y'all, y'all have to. It's, your, it's kind of your job, but you know. yes, I'm glad I didn't. So I don't. All this does not have as bad of a taste for me right now. It's just now I'm like, oh, multiplayer's a going to be a thing. Mm -hmm. That's wild. I wonder what it could be, and that's really all for me. You know, there's the graphics didn't even didn't even notice. Yeah, perfect. No, it's good. It's good to have that standpoint here because you know, Carrick and I. I wouldn't refer to it as a bias, but you know we're we're in a different bubble, so to speak. You know, we we work day in day out with games. It's not a, it's still to me a luxury, and it's still to me a hobby. But it's also a big part of my job, and um, sometimes we're attached to it, and and th therefore in turn you look closer to it than most people who just on the surface are like it's fine, and and sometimes that can be our Achilles heel. I've been told on occasions before it's like yeah you're like looking way too deep into this. Um, not like tinfoil hat looking too deep, but it's just like, look, just, just chill. Like, it's not a big deal. It's like, all right, you're right. You're right. <laughs> so, yeah, and, it happens. And, and graphics are a big thing for me. You know, I upgrade my, my computer on a constant basis. Oh, really? You okay. know, not, not every year, just to make sure that I can stick with it. I, I like the Ultra 60 frames to support it for me. And uh, there's certain games I play on here versus my Switch, Xbox, whatever. But yeah. graphics are important to me. And I, I like the RTX stuff, so I'm I'm looking forward to that. But right. you know, it, it still doesn't look like oh my gosh, that looks terrible. Like I don't see Mass Effect Andromeda face faces. Like no, that would, no, it's like, not if even. I saw, <laughs> if I saw something like that, I'd be like, whoa, <laughs> yeah, what just happened? So you know, I'm glad I'm glad I didn't look into it to begin with. Nice. All right. With that all being said, we move on to what we're playing. So, who wants to start? This is like the section where we talk about what games we're playing, what we're looking forward to if we're not really playing anything, really keeping our options open here. Anyone? Any takers? Go ahead, Cameron. Do you want to go first? Yeah, um, I've been uh, learning how to mod on Fallout 4. Ooh, it's been, uh, oh, I've, yeah. always, I've always wanted to know how to, and uh, I've, been working on, nice. I've been working on some stuff, uh, trying to get on the one of those teams making those remasters um nice. out there. I like that. Uh, so, so I'm working on, you know, doing all kinds of things. Uh, I did a evil playthrough in Fallout three because I sat down and realized, holy crap, I've never done one. And I love Fallout so much. I was like, I can't believe really? I've never done it. Yeah. And it surprised me. I was like, wait, why haven't I done it? Because somebody <laughs> asked me how does it end and I was like, Well, I uh... don't know. <laughs> and I was like, crap, I gotta go play. So uh, I enjoyed funny. that. But one thing I do want to bring like to is uh i like playing madden but i hate it being ea's madden uh because ea is well, ea but uh madden is very the same very much the same every year year on year out and uh you know it's a 60 dollars game it's not a 20 dollars game it's so similar year on. but you know they've uh they're changing their course this year a little bit and they're they're adding they're treating it more like a live service game in a way they're adding new game modes and stuff into it and i know it's just football but from a standpoint of just looking at like an EA company doing it, like it looks, it look I like that. Like I mean, the game mode's pretty fun that they added. What um, are they adding? I heard something about Superstars KO. I don't know if that was the name yeah, of the stream yeah, or. Yeah. yeah, no, it's like a you know you pick a coach and you know they got like all kinds of they got some NFL players. They also got like Lil Yachty and DJ Khaled. All right, so like you just pick a coach <laughs> okay. and each one uh, has like a special. <laughs> so this coach might have. Better pass in place. This coach might have. What does DJ Collin have? I, gotta... I don't. I don't know, man. I don't know. He's got uh, the hype meter. <laughs> yeah, his name is uh his team name is like Florida Keys or something like oh that. Oh my but, god. Uh, so uh, that's so you pick funny. A, you pick a coach, then you pick. You got like 
three players. You know, after you pick your scheme, it lets you pick like either two offense or two defense or three offense and three defense. And you, know, you pick three players in total, and then you go play against these other people. When you if you win the round, uh, you go on to the next round and you get to pick another player. Mm-hmm. So now you have four players, and you'll play against somebody else who has four. If you win that, you go to another one. It's, it's different. Okay. Um, and I like to see that. But they also released like a mini uh, window now for uh, content they're going to be releasing. Like right now it's in the beta. They say they've got more stuff coming to it. And, uh, you know, I feel like everybody uses beta just as like, well, it's the beta. You can't get mad at us. I feel like that gets thrown out a lot. Um, yes, absolutely. But they've got a like a, a window of like, hey, we want this to come out, you know, this weekend. And they're they're working into it. And also during the franchise, they're adding in – the commentators are not saying the same thing over and over again, and that mm-hmm. gets really boring. Uh, so they're adding in, you know, as the weeks go on, you know, if something happens this weekend, next weekend right. when you're going to play, whatever happened in real life is going to be in that game. And it's stuff like that that's really interesting. That's cool. Yep. Because yeah, it makes the game – more you feel more what's the word you're kind of it's a part of the real world i'd say yeah like you feel you're it's more enjoyable and you know a lot a lot of people just don't like football games and uh you know i love i wish 2k would make it but that's a totally different argument but it, 2K i'm needs glad to make to. their baseball games again that's what they need to do because sony's the only one making baseball games that's how i look yeah at it. i feel like ea deserves a little bit of credit for this because you know they do a lot to get a lot of yeah i'm not on ea side on a lot of things by the way so i don't Get, don't get me confused with that, but right. I do think that this was a good step. No, absolutely, and it, it sounds like it. I haven't looked into it at all. I don't know much about it, but yeah, weekly updates with commentary. I feel like I have heard that before. It might be with, I don't know, was it FIFA or NHL? Um, yeah, I, I used to play a lot of NHL. I stopped two years ago because I got sick of it. It was literally, as you said, same thing year in, year out. It is continuously a fucking terrible franchise, and I refuse to support it anymore. Uh, I don't even blame EA. I just think it's a very uninspired game half the time. <laughs> um, even FIFA, I was looking, I was like, they're adding FIFA Street to the game. Like, that's awesome. Because FIFA Street in, I think it was 2013 or 2012, that was underrated. That was such a cool standalone release for EA, and obviously it went, didn't go anywhere, but it was awesome to see. So to see that come back, like at least you're seeing them have fun with it. And all I'm seeing NHL at is, I think it's like a like a street hockey kind of mode. I'm like, it's still the same fucking game, guys. Like, do something that makes it play differently. Like the reason FIFA Street's cool is because it's more about tricks and scaling past your opponent on a very small pitch. And the nets are like a foot tall and they're very wide. And so there's a lot more scoring and it's all about style. So you play the game differently. You know, you don't see that being introduced in a lot of different games, but uh, you see it now. It sounds like in Madden, you're seeing it in FIFA. You don't see it in NHL though. So um, it's good to see that you play anything else outside of that or just those things. Uh, 55, 60% of my time has been working on the creation kit, which is really awesome. By the way, cool. I really love it. Once you actually get to know what the hell you're doing, it's awesome. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Nice, Carrick. Uh, I think it goes without saying we know what you're playing, but uh, you're able to talk a little bit on some of these games. Uh, one being Gears, I imagine. One being Greedfall, and uh, if there's any other surprises you got in store with us uh-huh. for us, rather, uh, blow our minds. I wish we could both say Borderlands. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say I agree with the NFL stuff, and as an NFL fan of the 2K games, and the Madden games are fine, they're, uh, you know, whatever, but the idea of adding the the stuff is something that I think fans have asked for for like, since it became online. Mm-hmm. So the idea to do that, also I would love for them to just say, fuck it, we're not doing a next year update, we're going to keep the same game and we're just going to add to it. Mm. Um, I, I think that would be awesome because $60 each month or each year is just, it's sort of, if football doesn't magically change, there won't be mortar rounds game at some point, you know? Yeah. So the idea of adding that kind of stuff is great. Yeah. So gears, I finished up gears is awesome. 60 FPS, much higher on the PC. One of the most optimized titles and digital foundry did a video. So if anybody gets a chance and you're interested in tech, what's going on behind the scenes in gears of war, uh, five is probably some of the most impressive tech i've ever seen and uh, john from digital foundry breaks it down 
some insane stuff to get that at 60 fps and to get it to look the way it does on the consoles is ridiculous i was gonna say i saw people posting that it was 4k 60 fps on xbox one x and people were like pretty stunned because of how good it looks dude it's ridiculous even on the original it's ridiculous they're using some variable resolution tricks and all this kind of stuff so and it's fun it's having online problems right now which unfortunately i don't remember a gears that didn't um and that just sucks. An online game that didn't <laughs> i don't remember it on yeah like it's sort of the thing that you know they're testing they need to test with like every company right now just needs to start testing their online at three times the amount of whatever they test currently because mm -hmm. they always seem to have issues and then yeah greedfall um I will say uh, one of the things I can say, and I did get authorization from Focus, so if anybody gets mad at me saying this, but um, is that the normal spiders jank that I attribute to all their games, mm -hmm. some I've liked and some I haven't, is just not there. And look that, that way, so it's good to have that confirmed. Yeah, it, it was. It's pretty stunning to walk around and be like, "Whoa, what?" And you know, there's in every game even the best games gta's whatever there's always some glitch here and there you know with a character walking on a dog's head or something <laughs> um you, know, you, you yeah or upside down you you certainly have the uh, those occasions um but dude i got to say it do, it feels budget in the way it should versus the way i, I expect all spiders games to so be. let me make a comparison if you're allowed to Oh, yeah. Because when I think of budget done right, I instantly think of Vampire. So do I. Okay. So it's kind of yeah. like that. It's like the yep. money went to the right place. It's not perfect, but they, they spent their money wisely. Yeah, dude. When you're running through the forest, like, and I'm on the PC and okay. I'm accustomed to 4K 60 FPS being difficult to hit sometimes with a 2080 Ti. You know, they're just not optimized. And I'm hitting it most of the time. And you're just like, okay, and it looks good. There's a lot of options. There's no, I, I had one animal pathing bug the entire time and I'm like, you know, 25 hours in and there, it, it really does have a lot less jank than I expected. Also, I've joked with you about this. I'm not a huge fan of like, let's say Elder Scrolls lore. Like I'm not a lore <laughs> fan in most games. Vampire I was. Um, what other games have we liked the lore in? There's, you I know, mean, there's Kotor, just those. I guess, right? I mean, that's yeah, kind of right? goes without the, saying. There's just those <clears throat> games that, I don't think I've ever, and I don't think this is going to be for everybody um, because of the way it is, but dude, it's unique. Like, mm -hmm. I can say that much. I mean, there's weird things going on in the game that you're you're reading about, like, how a certain group does something. You're like, what the, how is that okay? Like, how, and they, they don't shy away from having really weird factions that do stuff that you're just like, whoa. Also, some of the best quest choices I've seen in a game um nice dude this there was shit we like to hear there there's never a time where it's I got me ever up in my chair let's go yeah there's never a time where it's ever <laughs> what you think like they'll be all like there was this one guy i was telling the guys in the podcast there was this one guy where i'm like i hate this dude i'm gonna go fuck him up i got everything <laughs> geared up i was following the quest no quest is one two three ever so i get the quest stuff i also think i figure it out i go to talk to him and the look of in he was incredulous that I would ever think he was a bad guy. And I don't think I've seen that in a game. I came up to him and I'm like, boom, this is what's happening. And the look on his face <laughs> was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And I'm like, no, dude, I know. And I'm trying to get, I'm trying to be like, I want to attack him. What button do I hit? And he's like, I have no clue what you're even talking about. And then I start talking to him. I'm like, you start to he feel has, weird. <laughs> dude. Yeah. And I'm like, oh shit. And you know, slowly put the sword away and you're all, uh, <laughs> What's happening right now? And I wouldn't say every quest has that, but many, many quests have multiple ways to get through them, multiple skills that oh. might, charisma might interact, and um, characters that will react depending on what you do. Uh, your characters, your NPC, uh, your player party characters. So and they, they said they were going to like replace Bioware. Are you getting that vibe? That is a heavy heavy weight to put on somebody yeah. but i will say it could be bioware light oh so um bioware you know me like i'm a big like old style bioware Same. and and then into mass effect one and two and then some of three so but yes i mean dude there's never a time never where you're like i know exactly what to do because you'll go to a guy and and we've seen that in other games it's not like it's all special it's just that it's delivered with a finesse that spiders is not known for 
And it's far yeah. closer to a vampire or even a Mass Effect. Also, they never finish on a sentence. So, like, somebody will be all, I did this, blah, blah, blah. And in most games, that's the end, and you move on. This game, almost every single time the, 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 the fruit of a conversation is delivered, there's a little, a little bit at the end where, like, they'll add something else. And you'll catch yourself going, wait, well, what is that? Does that mean then that this is going on? And so it, it's weird. What do you mean by it's, that? Like a one-liner while walking away, sort of? That's uh, like no, of you know how you're in a group and maybe you'll get the one answer. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, I did it. It's mm -hmm. never that. And oh. even if they say I did do it, they'll be like, you caught me. And you'll be all, aha. And then they're all, because blah, 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 blah. And you're like, wait, okay, what? Like, mm -hmm. so this guy has, what's going on? And even with other side characters, it'll be like, three guys did this. You need to go find out where one of the three is missing because they're missing. And you're like, no problem. I'm sure one of them killed him. Like, that's what normally happens is one oh. of these guys killed him. And you go and they're that like, so good. They're like, blah, blah, blah. And the other guy's all, no, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, well, wait, which one? And then, and then the thing, the sort of the tropes that you expect, they've worked around. And they have a weird world. It is weird. It's like colonial. It's not as colonial as people think. It's, it's not just, like. I thought it was aesthetically um, like dressed. It is aesthetically up colonial for sure. But I mean, um, there are natives in the world, but they're, they're not anti you and you're not anti that it's it's hard oh, to they're not and, against you that's interesting see i always well, thought they'd be like get off our groups, land or something like you, that. right some groups there are groups that are like that but not all of them additionally right. armor if you wear different armor different factions will so remember in kotor you put on the sand people armor and you're able to sneak in oh there's yeah. Great part. multiple ar multiple armors in this game that allow that so there's priest armors that allow you to talk to yeah, people disguises. there's there's disguises and um the only thing i noticed that hit me as not an as a negative i would say is that when i got into a group with my co partner people mm -hmm. when you when you talk to them they don't have near as much to say as i expected and that's pretty far in the game admittedly i haven't romanced anybody because i hate romance in video games i think it's I, i'm going to do it for the review but i won't do it until i'm pretty close to the end because i just i don't think it's handled well. either there's only one it, love who? story that I liked in gaming, and uh, well, it's Kotor, of course. There, that that Bastilla? Felt, yeah, felt felt natural. Okay, so this is something yeah, about so, how it happened. Where uh, I didn't, as a player, I, I, granted, I was a very young kid, so I, I'm not gonna sit here and act like oh, I've definitely had a, a crush on Bastilla for sure. But like, um, I just remember like that moment on the Death Star. Where I'm like, I felt myself actually genuinely caring. Like, Bastila, wait, you're you're doing this all wrong. Like, you know, come back to the light side. And you're like, wait, I really care about you. And like, you just right. have that like, and then like the game presents that option of like a, a romantic route. And you're like, shit, man. Like, yeah, that that was the one time I really I I, I yeah. dug it. And there there are other times throughout, but um, I've just never had that. I'm like you. I never. I don't know how you feel about it, Cameron. I've never had that uh that itch for a relationship in game right uh for me and, it feels weird just, yeah I, I i don't know i mean i'm, I'm not never trying connected. to sound like it's not bad i just never connect really i'm not um, trying to sound like a weirdo it's just it doesn't click with me so i always like even in fallouts i just never did it i they didn't fall are, out just because you know piper but hey go on yeah. <laughs> they are um they're not it, it, those those parts that i've talked to them about romantic options mm -hmm. um, are not as well written, I feel, than the rest of the game at all. So the rest, it's very cumbersome versus the rest of the game. The rest of the game is very, uh, uh, it, 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 there's more info, it's more eloquent, there's more weird oddities going on. Versus, when sorry, you, I didn't hear you, the, the character. Versus the, yeah, versus the romance options. It's okay. like, hey, I hope I didn't make you mad. And they're like, no, you didn't make me mad. And you're like, because I like your companionship. And and you're just like, What's I know where this sex? is going. <laughs> So, yeah, and that is sort of what it is. So, strangely <laughs> enough, in your party, that part is not handled very well. Um, but the rest of the game and the NPCs you meet... Also, I I don't know why the lore interests me, but it, it absolutely does. Um, it, like, I this is the first game I can remember in years. I always listen to the audio. But this is the first time where I was like, I made a couple notes about weird names that they would use for, like, a leader. Because I'm like, oh, what's... I mean, I was legit... And I still am like going, wait, what? Like, what's? And it might also just be because this is a weird game. There is hasn't been a colonial magic, fucking 
mix you can tell ever. it's an inspired project. I just yeah. there's something different about it. You get that feeling with yeah. some games when they come around where you can the product sort of like oozes that confidence and that this is something good and we believe in it. And uh, yeah, it's always looked like it. And it's really good to hear that a lot of the stuff that I was interested in or excited about you did by the way i gotta commend you on doing a good job of talking about all of that with and and making me more excited <laughs> without spoiling a fucking thing I, I i tried not to <laughs> yeah that was that was that was actually expertly done there <laughs> that was but really good. um uh and then lastly i'll say it's got one of the best armor systems i think i've it ever seen in a budget of, title of like unity like with the different parts and stuff yeah dude and they they they're like it'll say like a priest part so it'll have like a scroll and it'll say like a hunter which is like your feathers but you'll see other people in the game world also having a mix and you can literally oh. guess you can guess sort of what faction there you can be like mm, that's he's got a hunt like multiple hunter things and, you know if he doesn't have the face paint of a native you're like okay he might be in the hunter group uh, which I thought like it works for me and the upgrades are awesome there's so many suits of armor. Wow. And you're, it's like soldier armor, but you know, that, you know, worn this, worn that, and then you can upgrade it with those items and you can and do all this crazy stuff. And then there's two types of damage. There's armor and slicing damage. So by visual only, you can tell what they need. So you'll see this big hulking animal and you'll be like, I need to hit him with my mace to, to blast his armor off mm -hmm. to like smash through him before I can start just attacking with the sword. And if you do the opposite, it's going to take you forever if at all. And it can make an easy battle much more difficult if you don't have the right weapons. Um, and I will say the combat isn't... I think I saw some people say in Dark Souls, nah. No, nah. It's like a soft lock-on. <laughs> um, you have a dodge button, and then you get a ton of skills. But some of the skills offer, like, Shadow Step, just like Vampyr. Remember Vampyr had oh, the... Best you loved it so much, you were like, best dodge in the world. Uh, it's oh, not the God, best bro. dodge in the world, so but it does remind you of that physically like there it, it, it's it called shadow i think it's it. called shadow step even so it's like <laughs> yeah it's something That's like that good. um you can't be and then here's though they did like a special dude, like, i looked... think the fps changes so, for that boom. yeah yeah I, that I thing was oh. insane it looked so good um and then combat is uh you know combat's good but it's not dark souls it's not people like don't get your hopes up like i said Why it's a budget title souls from that I, th I thought it was good well, that it looked a little more fast i agree paced, and yeah. it looked it, like enemies weren't spongy which is an issue that bound by flame and technomancer really had yeah i didn't see any enemies that were spongy it depends on the difficulty though because i will admit mm -hmm. uh, when you put turn it up in difficulty they be you have to make sure your weapon is like upgraded right um but uh overall it's it's certainly different. I will say that it's not at right. all the world that I. It reminds me of Jade Empire. Jade Empire was like Kotor, but in yeah. Chinese and then it had steampunk like these new gameplay <laughs> systems. Yeah, yeah, and so this is sort of the same. It is dreary as fuck, though. I'll just say it's got that. I don't know how to describe it. And it, it lighting isn't. It? it looks like a B title where I wanted spiders to always be, but where they've never been. Good shit. And right. if that makes sense, you know. So uh, yeah, Cameron, and are you that's it? Are you interested at all in Greedfall? Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, um, nice. It looks amazing. You know, from what I've seen, it's something different. And I've really been looking for, you know, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. uh, something just, you know, not all the way out of the weird. Like, what the hell is that? But like something that's like, okay, it's got elements of this and this, but it's got a different universe. And I think it, it looks good. It looks good, uh, especially you know after what you. I was just like zoned out, just like listening to what you were talking about, like this character and this i was like oh is he about to say a name i was like who is it who what did they do what happened but then yeah. like it's like wow now i want to go play i want to know what he's talking about mm -hmm. um i will say the faces they ain't oblivion but yeah i noticed couple, that in the trailer yeah there's a couple dudes who also share the same face which i'm gonna tell you is a little creepy when you walk up to a dude and he's got this certain look to his face and then like you go talk to somebody in a different town and you're all, are you guys brothers or what's, what's happening right now? There, I, w I would like more variability there. And there is, you, you okay. cert, it's a, that is a budget title. That I mean, might be the trade off for the armor system when you think about it's it. It's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. It's really good that that would categorize into the game. I'm really looking forward to. I really think it has eclipsed uh, the excitement I have for Borderlands three, but I, I said this during my, my Twitch stream. Cause a lot of people were like, 
every time I stream on Twitch, uh, you know, I always get asked about who I'm playing as in Borderlands 3. Am I excited for Borderlands 3? Uh, and it's because a lot of my Borderlands 3 content has done well this year. But the reason that G Greedfall sort of eclipsed Borderlands 3 is I, I think a lot of people forget I've sat down for seven hours with this game already. So, like, I yeah, know sure. I know a lot about this game. And I'm very positive on all of it, by the way. You know, there's very few things I walked away from with this game that I'm like, I didn't like that. Like, it's going to be really fun. It's going to be a good game, at least gameplay-wise. I don't know how the story will pan out, if the characters will be as good, if the quests will be as wacky. I think that's going to be the thing too because mm -hmm. it's a different world right yeah. like what are you you may not be as excited because i'm into history so like what are you gonna yeah i think quest wise you'll probably like it i don't see you i would be we'll have to have a talk because then we'll have to be like why is it that oh, we're gonna have like, like a spoiler chat we have to. but i'm what i mean is i if we disagreed on that <clears throat> that would be really weird mm -hmm. because i think i know overall what you and i we have we align on those um but I, I could see people being like the world's not as interesting you know because it is colonial that's it yeah. is weird you know because yeah we've never seen that right have we seen oh fable the fable games have definitely with their tricorn hats mm -hmm. at times they definitely feels a, more, a little bit more goofy though i guess it'd be the it, right. very much so yeah, yeah. it, it were, yeah. were greed falls there ain't nothing around. goofy in this game yeah that's why though i, I think that. because of the mystery of this universe and how I'm so familiar already with Borderlands 3. I think it just, Greedfall's kind of eclipsed with excitement. It's just, you know, it's yeah, new. Yeah, I get you. Um, and it's what happens with, with press previews. I let people all know all the time. It's like, you know, there is a sense of familiarity. It doesn't diminish my excitement. It's just like, I've gotten a taste of it. Like, I know what it's like. Yeah. You know, I'm starving on Greedfall, guys. <laughs> yeah, like, I was just, you know, Carrick and I have been talking, and uh, and Cameron heard me before the show. I was talking about the review copy situation. I was like, fuck, man. Like, I, I want to play this game. Like, not just for myself, obviously coverage, but like, you know, I'm excited. So uh, I, I, I am with you guys on, on starting for games. Uh, currently, though, as I await, hopefully, Greedfall uh, sometime this weekend, what I've been playing a lot of is Astral Chain, and I'm very excited to talk about this one mm. because uh, this is slowly, Carrick, I'm sorry to break your heart a little bit on Mario and Rabbids, but it's slowly working its way into, and I'll have to let it digest a little bit, but into that favorite Switch exclusive. Wow. Yeah, it is... It is, and I, I know I'm not thinking of Smash right now. We'll, we'll see how it marinates and, and sits over time. But as of now, like, it's heading in that direction, it feels like. Uh, and this is, as someone who has currently, of this time, not played Fire Emblem, that's just way too big of a commitment for this time of year for me. Uh, maybe right. later on. I don't have time for a 300-hour JRPG. I don't. Um, but holy smokes, man. Uh, excellent combat. But what's great about it is is very frequently... In platinum titles, you just have your light attack, even near Automata, which is one of my favorite games of all time. Light attack, heavy attack, dodge button. Now, this game is one button will control. It's a trigger-based attack, not even face buttons. It's trigger-based. Uh, so one trigger will control your attacks, and then you'll see a flash, and then you can do what's called a sync attack, which controls your legion, which is that little uh, thing that's attached to you by a chain. Um that'll sync an attack with that and so that's how you combo so there's a little a level of thought because also you can use that chain to wrap up your enemies and and bind them um and it's all about those sync attacks so if you wrap them up and bind them if you have a skill you can press the left trigger to do another sync attack which lets you come in and do mass damage um since you can control the legion as well you can for example send him on to someone and then hold the legion button press the attack button and you pull yourself to the legion so there's a little bit of like dmc in there where you're pulling yourself to the enemy mm -hmm. and you can get on the assault in that way um you get three weapons at least as far as i know i'm on chapter nine or ten out of twelve and you get and this is by the way right off the beginning you get a long sword uh you get an x baton and you get a gun and each of those plays completely differently obviously the long sword or the broad sword is more of a slower heavy damage dealer still viable though uh mm -hmm. expaton's more of your medium uh average damage solid attack speed flashy looking kind of typical platinum games and then the gun you can use at a distance and why this is all good is because you have five legion you can cycle through which have not only their own skills uh in the terms of combat where they do different things for you and protect you in different ways but they also combo differently with each of those weapons so if you use a gun and a legion that is uh bow based arrow bow and arrow based your combos with them are different and more range based versus if you used a sword and the bow and arrow legion or a sword and the beast legion 
or the broadsword and the axe legion, the combos change constantly, and certain ones are... It's not like you're targeting weaknesses, by the way, but certain damage outputs are more viable against different enemy types, and there are uh, an extensive amount of enemies to take down, whether they're flying, there's enemies that ground themselves, and they create a shield for other enemies, so you have to take your beast legion, which is like a dog, and send him to dig them up, and then you can attack the person creating the shield, or if there's a shield guy in the sky, you shoot him with the bow and arrow. There's a lot of variety in the enemies, so like I said, this, this amongst probably other systems I'm not thinking of right now, uh, create a very thoughtful combat system, but what really surprised me the most about this game was that there's actually a well-realized universe here. Uh, the story, and I'm not, number one, it's I'm 18 hours in. Like, this is not your typical Platinum Games six-hour, six to eight-hour right. campaign. Uh, it's lengthy. Uh, not super long, but it's it's lengthy enough. Like, it's probably a 20 to 24-hour game if you do all the side content. Um, there's side missions throughout. Uh, one of the issues, though, uh, before I get into the story a little bit, is that you do revisit some locations, which is sort of why I said I'm a little unsure and I have to let it sit there because around Chapter 8, um, they're like, okay, you're going to Harmony Square. I'm like, this is the third time I've gone here. And each time it's different and you explore the level differently and events in the story have happened to change what's going on. And there is a purpose for being there narratively, uh, but it is still that same location. And you do make note gotcha. of that. Um but what I was getting out of the story is it's actually solid. Um, I don't think it's as character-driven. It's more so just an awesome universe, well-realized. There's a lot of lore in the game. Uh, you can unlock more entries in the database by taking out your camera and taking pictures of the Chimera, which are enemies you fight from this astral plane, or people in the police station. Um, there's a level of customization, upgrading, skill assign uh, assignments. There's a progression tree for your legions themselves. You can change the color scheme for them. You can change your outfit for your character. It's a it's a very impressive game. It's a lot more than I expected. Um, it's like I said, it's not a combat system. You can just pick up and be good at. You you have to get used to it. And what's awesome about it, at least for my taste, is it's paced differently. There are times where you walk around like a little hub area, and you're doing police work. Like you're you're getting you're in, in interrogating people. You're getting, you're taking notes, and then you'll revise with your partner, and and you'll sort of put the mystery together, and you'll start chasing down the next clue. Um, so there's a pacing where it's not always just combat, 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 which has been a complaint for folks, but I feel it's been good for this game because it allows those moments of combat to flourish. Because when it really starts to, there's one chapter where you're sort of just doing busy work and it does beat you over the head with a ton of combat, and at that point it does get a little mind numbing because it's like, okay, this is just a shit ton of the same thing where it's a really strong game because of how it paces itself and delivers and unveils and creates a universe and respects it. And clearly they care about it. You can tell. Um, so yeah, this is really shaping up to be in a game of the year. Is talk it, for me. is it uh, real time combat? Yes. Is it control? Uh, like what's the well, response? Like, is it like a DMC speed of response? Is it like Bayonetta? Is it, I mean, what's like I'd how say, fat, how, how twitchy or I'd not say, twitchy? I'd say but, in know. between because it's still that, uh, when an enemy attacks, you'll see like a red flash. It's like, okay, dodge, dodge it at okay. the right time. Perfect dodge. You can counter attack, but sometimes, uh, I I'd say I'd put it in speed between those two actually, because I think Bayonetta is a little too fast. I think devil may cry is a little slower depending on if you're playing as V or, Dante or Nero, yeah. it really depends. But um, the reason I'd say this game isn't actually as fast as I think people will expect is because it depends on how you play it. If you're using the gun and the bow and arrow at a distance, which, by the way, is a viable option in the way the enemies are crafted, it still is challenging. Um, it it just, I guess, depends on, on, on how, yeah, how you approach combat because you can slow it down as much as you want. And, for example, control your legion to bind up an enemy or control your legion and activate one of their abilities. Like, we'll stick with the bow and arrow guy so I don't get too spoilery about everything. But he has an ability called Hit Shot, which each of these legion have, by the way. But his Hit Shot is he just takes out both bow and arrows from his hands and he just starts firing away for, like, 10 seconds. Just constantly, like, and he's just doing 5 damage, 5 damage, but it's, like, 80 times over. And so you're staggering your opponent, and now you can approach differently. So you can take mm. that aggressively, or you can sit back with a gun and keep shooting them. It's up to you. Um, but when I I should mention when I say like you can take out a gun, it's not like it turns into a third-person shooter. 
Uh, the game has an you can either lock on or you can auto lock uh, mm-hmm. where, where the game targets for you, which is reliable enough. Um, although sometimes camera can be a little finicky, but um, yeah, it, it really depends on how you approach it. It is still a fast game, but there are times where if it becomes a lot, uh, you can slow it down, which the game usually has a good feel for. Another example is there's an enemy that's like a bird that can start shooting gusts of wind at you and it can start moving you back and let the enemies come at you. So what you can do is take out your beast legion and press L and you'll hop on his back and you'll start riding him. And now the wind resistance is gone because you're just riding right through it and you can approach that enemy, attack them uh, and start taking them out. So then you can focus on everyone around you. So there's a level of thought there. And for that thought to be there, you sort of have to just temper it down a little bit. The way they create their fight arenas, um, it, it's really it's really well thought out. It's, is, it's it, uh, is it graphically... I, the streams I saw looked like it was graphically a, like, a lot on the screen and sort of like Bayonetta where you're all, fuck, this is busy. Is it, and, it is, and can it be played on handheld? Have you been playing handheld? I have been playing handheld. I actually played it docked for a couple of hours, and I'm just one of those Switch owners where I feel weird unless it's Smash. I feel very strange playing it docked. Okay. Um, but it, I adjusted. It felt fine docked. I've been playing it mostly handheld. It is a busy game, but it's not a Platinum Games title where uh, in Bayonetta arenas, at least when I replayed Bayonetta 1 last year, you know, the, or or near Automata, I replayed that earlier. There are certain parts where they will hit you with a lot of enemies at once. Um, and, and this one will send like four or five enemies at you, and that is considered, whoa, that's a lot, or two very large enemies. And that's what gotcha. I like about the game. It's a lot more, uh, I'll use the word again, thoughtful. And this is important to mention because while I love near Automata's combat, they send mindless robots at you very frequently that don't challenge you. The challenge in Nier is really not getting hit, which kind of works because a lot of the animation work is about fluidity and smoothness and elegance. So it works a lot better where when you start off the game as a cop, um, before you even get your legion, the combat is very slow, clunky. You're like, what is this? Is a platinum game? And I wasn't saying that in a negative way. I was like, there's obviously a catch here. Right. And it's really not till chapter three, which, mind you, isn't super deep into the game and, and you get there pretty fast. But it's not really till like chapter three that you start to see the speed of the combat. And, and, and they have to do it this way because otherwise, I mean, with all the legions and all they can do, I'm still learning new stuff about the combat. There's a lot to it. And I feel mm. that they just dropped it all and said, speed, go. Uh, it, it really would have fucked up the game. So I think the developers had a really good understanding of what they had here. And what they had to do to execute it. They've done a really good job. And I've, I've enjoyed it quite a bit. I'll probably be beating it this weekend. Provided is that Ball a, isn't right there in my inbox. Is that a 60 or a $40 60. Dollar game? $60 game? Well, so and, I, I think if it were like a 10-hour game, I'd have probably been a little more harder on some of like the camera stuff or uh, right. the re- revisiting areas. But because the combat's so good and thoughtful and the story is well-realized, and the, or rather the universe is well-realized and the story is solid... Um, I'm a little bit willing to overlook some of the issues that pop up every here and there. What's the, um, do you know what the average time for somebody who's beat it is? Have you, have you looked yet? I have not looked yet. Cause I don't want to ruin it. Cause I'm so close to the end. Um, oh, oh you are close. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh yeah. yeah. You did say you're going to beat it this week. But it's All like right. I said, I I'm, I'm about close to 20 hours and I'd say this is a roughly 20 hour title, but I have been like, doing all the side they're called cases there's red cases which are more combat or challenge oriented and there's blue cases which is like working with civilians um and oh my god i can't this reminds me i can't believe i forgot this <laughs> uh the legions that you acquire yeah they're useful in combat but they actually change the way you explore the levels which sort of goes with what i was talking about where you revisit some areas but the legion are so well thought out like the bow and arrow can shoot targets uh the sword can slash laser wires which can allow you to go into different areas the axe can blow up shields, and I don't want to ruin the rest, of course. But um, there's a lot of different ways to explore the environment, and so there's secrets, and hmm. obviously you're not going to see all those the first time through. Um, so it's fun to go back, but it's also fun to explore these locations and and uncover everything there. It's it's awesome. There's a lot to it. There's a lot of heart here. Um, yeah, man, just oh, I love the game. It's very fun. It's very yeah. It'll be interesting once you get done if you think it's better than rabbits, because that's yeah. I mean. I guess even if it's not, that's pretty crazy to 
It's up there. It It'll same. easily yeah. be one of my favorites on the Switch. We'll see if it's the favorite. Rabbids is a very tough one to just hop above because it's so well made and it's so fun. <laughs> it's just yeah. it's and it's also just the the fact that it exists gives it like a bunch of bonus. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's something about playing a game you just you don't really you can't believe you're playing. Mm -hmm. Cameron, uh, you said you love your Switch. Have you been playing Astro Chain at all? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. I it said, kinda... uh, I said, um, you love your Switch. You mentioned earlier. Have you been playing Astral Chain? Uh, no, I haven't. Actually, you're the first person I've ever heard this from. Um, <laughs> yeah, I typically stick to uh, Mario games, and I really only use it when I'm on the road. So, oh, so I try to, I try to balance it. I haven't gotten on it in a while because I seem like I've been so busy on mm -hmm. all these other things. Uh, but I try to balance the mix between the Xbox, PC, and Switch. And I and love lot. the Switch to death. But typically I use it on road trips. Like, it got a lot of use this summer. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be scenarios where I got where I get it to use. Uh, but lately, I, the next game I'll probably play on it is going to be the Pokemon. Nice. Oh, no, okay. Nothing wrong yeah. with that. Yeah, I was just curious because yeah. I remember you saying earlier you liked your Switch. And I was like... Is he is he in that greedfall mode where he's just absorbing it all, or does he not give a single fuck? <laughs> oh no 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 no! I've been listening. To no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not girl. <laughs> but the uh, one thing that gets me, you know, y'all talked about it again, uh, is like I, I love the idea of taking games that have already been like the third party games and releasing it on there. Like I don't feel oh, yeah, like it's great. a gimmick. Like I would pay sixty dollars for Fallout Three on the Switch in a heartbeat. I don't. I mean. If they put that on there, oh my gosh, I would mm -hmm. never get anything done outside of the house because I already don't inside the house. Um, <laughs> I love the Switch. I, I've, I have had no issues with it. Uh, but one thing, I've never used it docked. I've never done it. Hmm. But like I said, it's, I think it's because I just I never use it at the house, except for like the first day I got it. Um, like I opened it up and like, oh man, this is so cool. But I always use it like, like, all right, we got a four-hour drive. Like, oh, well, <laughs> let me mm -hmm. make sure we're good here. <laughs> no, so, I, I, I get that totally. Yeah, for me, my, my Switch, I assimilate more with, like, putting my feet up or, or laying in bed and playing it because um, I, I tend to game a lot, if anyone couldn't tell. <laughs> uh, so, so for me, uh, traveling is my time to watch movies. So, like, what I'll do is, like, if uh, I'm on a plane for an event or uh, a preview or, or something like that, um, I'll usually just spend that time on the plane just watching shit I missed over the year, and it, it works yeah. like a charm. I, I watched, like, all of the Creed movies. I watched Aquaman, uh, Chappaquiddick. Like, I just watched all these movies. I'm like, oh, this exists? All right, cool, let's watch this. Like, because I'm not a huge movie goer. I've improved, but, um, yeah, it's I, I get what you're saying, man. And it's funny because I get so motion sick that, like, I would never think of using the switch while i drove or while somebody drove mm -hmm. like on any trips so i have to be like you where i, I would watch shows yeah. versus versus I play games. so i think that's well why i dock things mine. moving around me <laughs> yeah i it's think something about it for me uh, motion sickness i don't know why maybe it's just me i'm not just weird as hell um in a third road vehicle uh, like an suv i cannot do anything on my phone if i'm in the very back row i do not know why yeah it, like even just like texting like if i say if i'm on uh whatever on my phone for a while i'll start getting uh, a tiny headache i try to go to sleep i just i'll That's i'll stay awake before it and i'll just try to go to sleep but if i'm in the middle i'm fine and if i'm at the very front i'm fine but i don't know i don't know what's about it you know mm -hmm. there's probably some scientific explanation but if i'm in the third row i'm not doing nothing the switch is <laughs> staying put up and i'm going to sleep if you mean if you're in the third row in the back of a car there is science about it because the back of the car um, moves more it's why people who ride roller coasters pick certain seats because Ooh, the speed wow. is different depending on what seat you you sit in you are the velocity fountain of knowledge my friend Holy nah shit. dude i get sick really easy so i've looked this up <laughs> i can't i can't i can't brag about that but i get i get i get motion sick so easy and i'm the same way as him like i if i look down at a cell phone while somebody's driving it's instant i mean i get a weird headache my that gets like that there's no headache I can describe like a, sea, a car sickness headache. It's weird and it's cloying and it's like it's dirty. It just nothing works. And yeah, the little pills that I don't know who like they do not work for me. I just gotta go to sleep. Oh, the, uh... oh, they do work. Dramamine. I do I, use Dramamine for I VR for and flights. for drives. 
you know, it's funny. Likes. Yeah. You know, it's funny. You mentioned that uh, I get them in the weirdest things. I remember one time I got uh, Vertigo f- from uh, a oh, what was it? An inversion table. And anytime I put my head flat on my pillow, it would feel like the blood was rushing to my head. Really strange. And then I got yeah. uh, that kind of you know when you like you're on a boat or a plane and then you could like lay on your bed on your back and like you sort of feel like you're rocking like this. I got that from being on a subway. I don't know how. <laughs> I yeah. Did oh, not. weird. Yeah, and I ride subways a ton. I was like, what the fuck? Like, why? <laughs> I've done this so much. Uh, I get them at the weirdest times and in the in the weirdest most extreme ways of that yeah yeah i hate i they're they're horrendous to get Mm -hmm. for sure but that's why i don't use mine that's why i'm so accustomed that's why i always ask about docked because that's yeah just you'd be fine docked it looks good docked um oh what's the res not that you look at res but i mean does it is it more about the special effects or is it like a high definition picture like which I think the, the art, two... I think the art style sells art style. it a lot. So it's more like particle effects that are are flashy and cool. Um, cool. There's a lot of color, so it sort of splashes the screen uh, with mm-hmm. a lot of things happening. Um, yeah, I'd say it's a mix actually of both. Really, it's. it's Do you like, like it more... better than uh, than Near Automata? No. Then. No. Okay. No, definitely not. It, it, I mean, Nier, Nier just has too good of a story. Uh, and then... yeah. Even Nier has its flaws. Like I said, it's it's combat I love, and that was one of my biggest issues is that I wanted a more challenging enemy to fight against me, which Astral mm-hmm. Chain provides in abundance, and it's very fun. Where where Nier is more about like you're you're this elegant android assassin just cutting through everything without an issue, that, um, with really game, good boss I, fights. But fucking, I'm so mad at that game, dude. It spoiled me. <laughs> On a lot of games. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of games I look at that. It elevates I, I, it. Yeah, and I look at that game and the music during a boss battle oh. probably will never be beaten. Like, yeah. there's there's a lot in that game that's just, it's ridiculous. There's a lot of that in Astral Chain, you'll be happy to know. Oh, okay, boss cool. fights are, they have two boss fights in Astral Chain, which are easily my favorites from Platinum Games. Like, just oh. really good. Like, because a lot of it always with Platinum Games was just mashing away, getting your distance, mashing away. But this is like targeting weak spots, reading enemy movements. There's thought in there. And I mm-hmm. I don't know. There was always some level of thought, but you could just get away with what I did, which is just light, light, heavy, light, heavy, Or light, reaction, know? too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. There's not as much looking. watch the enemy, and uh, you have to interact in your environment differently. And it's just, it's great. It's great. Did, uh... I, uh, speaking of the the boss music, that just instantly. Did y'all ever play Pikmin like on the GameCube nope. or the Wii with mm-hmm. like the little onions you have to grow? Uh, yeah. The boss, like yeah, it was like a kid game, but I love that damn game. <laughs> My people like uh, it. Um, the boss music and like the original ones, I, it still sticks with me. It was so intense. Maybe it's because I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, that could definitely be it. Um, but that and Halo's music stick with me, or like yeah. like the not necessarily the you know what I'm talking about, like the sounds and everything. It just right. it sticks with me. Yeah. There are good tracks there. I've never played Pikmin personally, but Halo I can attest to. <laughs> I've played yeah. a lot of freaking Halo. Oh, yeah. Segway check? Uh, actually, I got one thing. I don't know how I did not remember earlier. Uh, this game's been out for like two years now, I think. Uh, Deceit. Have y'all ever heard of that? Deceit? It's like a, de- like a horror multiplayer free-to-play online game. De- not Graphics are not great. Seed? Deceit. Like Deceit. Like That like was very Deceit. Oh, us. Deceit. No, I, I've not heard of that. Okay, so it's like a oh. game. You play with your friends, and uh, I think there's six or eight people, and uh, there's timers. You have to... There are two people are like these infected zombie things, and during the lights, the lights will stay on for a minute. You go around, you gather equipment and everything, and uh, the zombies are... They show up like humans. When the lights <clears> go <throat> off, they can then transform into the zombies, and so they get... they In order to transform, they have to drink blood from these little bags... Well, you don't know who is the zombie, so you have to go around, and it's amazing playing with a full lobby of your friends because you're just lying, like, "Oh yeah, it's he, he's the zombie, he's it." He's like, "Oh no, you are." Um, I can see, yeah, that makes and sense. it's it's I don't know, it's the simplest game ever. The graphics are not great at all, but it's a free to play game. I've been having an amazing time with it. Interesting, awesome. I've never heard of it. It's definitely a, it's a unique game mode, but uh, it's really fun. Wasn't there a game? That was really popular on YouTube in like 2014 or 15. It wasn't like someone had like a 
it's the same thing like you were trying to find out what person in the lobby had i think was it like a weapon or something like that and, and i don't remember what it was called I don't oh this, that one. this is gonna bug me man oh my god a lot of you, I could have sworn a lot of YouTubers played it, and and it was about just like figuring out, like I think people were like would work as teams secretly and oh, try to man. figure out who was lying, who was lying yeah, about it. Yeah, please, someone like tweet at me or post it in the comments. What was that game? The best I can describe this is like Clue, the board game. Yeah, but... no, that's what it was. Yeah, it was like Clue, but but like. Yeah. You don't. It's like you're actually playing it, and it's not. It's like you know they're infected, and you got you'll sit there and watch somebody, and you'll get all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. And like yesterday when we started, I was infected, and I told everybody, I was like, "Hey guys, I'm infected." Everybody thought I was kidding. So mm -hmm. at the end, I transformed and got everybody. <laughs> uh, and I was like, "Well, I told you I was infected." They're like, "Well, shit, you know they're voting people off. You can vote people off who you feel suspicious about." Mm -hmm. um, hmm. It's a really fun game. That sounds awesome. Yeah, let me let me know in the comments, ladies and gentlemen, or tweet at me. I'm curious what that game I'm thinking of is. All right, last segment is patron questions. This is where you get your chance to submit and ask us anything. Your chance with... to shine, baby. Pretty much, yeah. And what we're gonna start doing over time. Uh, this this week we didn't have a ton of questions. Um, but what we're going to start doing over time is if these questions work with the topics we have, um, which is why submitting so much like we've had these last couple of weeks is important, is uh, we're going to start putting them with the news topic. So if we're talking about Nintendo Direct, and there is, I'm not sure yet, we, we kind of read these on the fly now, uh, but if there is like a Nintendo-based question, we would include that in that section. So just know, uh, now when you become a patron, you ask those questions that... Uh, it's not like you have to wait till the end of the show to be a part of it. You'll be a part of it like the whole ride through. So uh, just know that's something we're going to change over time, provided the questions allow us to, because sometimes the, you know, we cover like five topics or eight topics, and maybe sometimes those questions don't land on any of those. So uh, just a heads up for the future. The first one comes from Natural, Natural Calamity. How do you deal with waiting for a game to come out or a dry month with no games? What are some tactics that you implement to make sure you use your time wisely or have fun with your time? I fail completely at that. <laughs> like uh -huh. I fail all the time, especially when it comes to YouTube. I always think Using I'm going to do wisely? videos. Yeah, dude, it's uh, like when cuz cuz I just I always have an idea for some side video or whatever and then if there's nothing, I'll end up loading up DC Online Universe and playing DC <laughs> for, like, another 60-level character. I'll be like, what am I doing with my life? Mm. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that because that's a defrag, but you know what I mean. Like, I, where I, I don't. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, See, I'm not very good on some of those dead times. But it's good you're not because I fail to do that and defrag. And sometimes, like, right now, like, I'm already kind of feeling like I was like, I was going to stream after this. And I can kind of feel because I've, like, been overloading myself. I'm like, I just kind of want to after this eat and just relax yeah. and decompress. Right. And that's because sometimes I don't pace myself. Like I make right. to do this and I'm like, I got to do all this today. I don't think like, Oh, tomorrow morning is now free. I can just do that. Then I'm like, Nope, got to do it all today. So, uh, yeah, when it comes to using time wisely, I don't know if we're the best people to ask. I'd say, I guess find we're both bad. <laughs> yeah. Find an in between yeah. of not overstressing yourself and, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and not going on to DC universe online and, and playing for, for sure. Lots of hours. <laughs> Do you have any tips for uh, time management, Cameron? Um, well, about the about the dry month games, uh, kind of similar to that. Like you know, the NFL started yesterday, the actual mm -hmm. season, and the first Cowboys game is Sunday. Okay, the last week has been god awful. It has dragged out forever. Like I mean, I'll look at the clock and be like, man, it was one o'clock two hours ago, and it's one o one. Um, mm -hmm. so. As far as using time wisely, I've always tried to make the most out of my day. Yeah, uh, not try like I love going to. I've started going to the gym. Uh, oh, nice. Trying to get in shape. Uh, I'm between jobs right now. I just left and I'm working to get to another one. Uh, uh, so lately, I've been trying to. If I'm not doing something productive, I feel like you know not all the time. Sometimes I want to reward myself. Be like you know what? I'm just gonna play video games all day. Like. Uh, but very rarely do I ever do it's a that. Thing, yeah. Uh, like I would like to learn how to do something. 
I, that's a huge thing I like to do. You know, whether that's building something, you know, using tools or, you know, like learning the creation kit. Uh, you know, something like that. Learning how to do something new. Like the other day I was bored. I was like, you know what? Let's, let's figure out how to do lighting. So I looked on YouTube videos. And by the way, people, you can do anything on YouTube. Like you can figure out how to mm -hmm. yeah, do anything, but probably a transmission. That's just because I wouldn't touch one. Um, but there's probably a video up there. So I try to make the most out of my day because, you know, you, you know, you only live once. But <laughs> I'm trying to – I try to stay productive the best I can. And, you know, some days you don't. It's just a slack day. Um, but I try to, as far as the games go, I just try not to think about it. Like yeah, Fallout 4, that's what I you know, do. I like let, I just 4, let it sneak up on me. The longer it comes up, the longer it was coming to it, oh my gosh, it <laughs> drug out for so long. And, you know, it goes with all kinds of games. Like, uh, I've been trying not to think about Outer Worlds at all. I've been trying not to, I've just zoned it out. Uh, I'm really excited for it. Uh, I've been trying not to think about it, you know, type it up. What are they doing? Like, what's what's the motive? Uh, I just try to, like, it's like one of those feelings, like, oh, man. That, that comes out next week. That's awesome. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. typically it's the week's time spans that I struggle the most with. Uh, time can fly by a lot faster with me if it's like a month away. But when it mm -hmm. gets really close, it drags and drags and drags. Yeah, I, I feel you on that, man. Because I, what I do usually is I do put it in the, the back of my head a little bit. Because I feel like, okay, there's nothing I can do to fast forward time. So I'm going to focus on everything now and just let that day come to me. And it, it, it's always worked. Uh, in, in turn, though, ladies and gentlemen, it does sort of diminish your initial excitement when you get a game because you've just forced it. For me, I force it so much into the back of my head that I'm like, when it comes, I'm like, all right, cool. Like, finally. you know. I, but it's not like that, yes, oh, my God, like I'm jittering outside the front of the a fucking GameStop, like waiting for the <laughs> waiting for the physical copy to touch my hands. Like You got to tan up a yeah, week away. <laughs> I, just, I just, yeah, I just don't have that in me as much as I used to. Um I guess I get more calming enjoyment out of it. Like, uh, I remember with the Xbox One launch, I was outside GameStop at, like, 3 p.m. waiting. I, I was just kind of, like, sitting there smiling. Like, I wasn't like, oh, boy. Like, I was, like, I was just chilling. I was like, this is kind of cool. Um, but that's just my general <laughs> yeah. approach to life. I've always been a very, like, relaxed person. Like, okay, we can't really do much about this. What can we do? It's like, okay, game's not going to come out on a different day. It's not going to come earlier. Yeah, I can't wait, but wasting my emotions on those feelings isn't really worth it yeah. to me, so I'm going to go do something, and I just kind of forget about it, and the days fly by, and it's like, the Outer Worlds, ladies and gentlemen, let's look at the Outer Worlds. It was last December it was announced. Now, I don't know about other people, it feels like it's dragged, but I, I can't believe in a month we're playing that game. You know, that's crazy to me. And maybe now that I say that, this month will take forever. But, uh, you know, like, it, it's insane how quickly that we've gotten to that, that release date. It's the 25th, right? October? Yeah, yeah, the okay. 25th of yeah. October. So it's like one of those situations where that's how much I put into the back of my head. When there was coverage, though, it was exciting because it was so in the back of my head that I was like, oh, I can talk about it now. Sweet. Like, let's get in on it. Um, but the way the industry is handled, it's not like, you know, you mentioned the Fallout 4 days, Cameron, where I felt like every day, every day, every week, there was just shit to talk about outside of, I think, like August, I used to joke about how it was like a drought. Yeah, like it was just constantly something Fallout Four related speculation, discussions, trailer analysis. I loved it. Comments. Loved yeah, it. it was amazing. But there was I never maybe because I was so deep in it. But there was just nothing like that. And so I think a lot of my audience is is from that era. <laughs> and uh, yeah, man, I, if you're having trouble waiting for a game or there's a dry month with games, I'd say try an indie, try something short and sweet, and then go do something different. You know, get that satiation or satiate that thirst to get something new at a cheap value that is very good and then like build your day around that like say like tonight i'm gonna play this indie game but before that i'm gonna do this 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 that most of my gaming goes from 7 p.m onwards i do i don't really game during the day at all unless i'm reviewing um it's very rare so i think the last time i really did like a major gaming session during the day was mortal kombat 11 when i reviewed it all right Let's move on to the next question from Knucklehead. What game mechanic do you think would be hilariously bad if implemented in a reverse way? I think it would be funny as hell to have an oxygen meter that only appeared while you were on land. <laughs> I don't know if I got a good answer for this one. To have a what? If only appeared on land? 
Say that oxygen again? meter to appear only if on land instead of like you go underwater in most open world games and oh like you're a merman yeah that would actually that could actually be cool <laughs> then how do you make it like is it an open ocean game it's not really open. yeah right <laughs> right hmm what do you think of mechanics that, the like, problem I'm thinking, i think like, with oh, mechanics but it targets you like what does that do is that how you yeah. feel with the stim pack <laughs> Yeah, that's sort of a it, it's sort of a what would not work kind of question to me. Uh, having like, to place oh. grenades instead of being able to throw. <laughs> like placing well, I, I instead of, like throwing mines, placing grenades. Yeah, like you got to run up to them, and because I never use mines in games, like I never oh. use a mine in Fallout Four. So like for me, it would just be some. I don't know. That's a hard question. Hmm. You and I play the same. I I don't think I've ever. I, it's been. I I don't remember ever placing a mine in Fallout Four or almost any game. If I get a mine in a game, I usually am like, what? And then if I can break it down or sell it, that's yep. the, that's what I do. I just <laughs> don't work that way. Traps, same way. They'll be like, this game, you can put traps down. I'm like, fuck that. That requires forethought, man. I ain't yeah. into that shit. Yeah. <laughs> I just I I'm not good at it. Hmm. Man, I don't know if I have a good answer for this. Pokemon, but instead of the Pokemon fighting, you come out and fight them yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you like you like punch the you punch like a Squirtle out, and then you just put them in a Pokemon. That's actually fucked up now. Having to would like having to charge your phone in video games would that work? Like GTA, like if you had to charge your phone, but like you had to leave it there. For a while. I guess he's asking though, like, is a mechanic that's in place? I was like, what, what's reverse yeah, touching a Pokemon? It's like, okay, you fight instead of them. I don't know. Like, that's that's uh, like messed up. Uh, <laughs> Monster Hunter oh. World, but you tame them. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Pokemon instead of like you going after them, like you're running away from them. Like they're yeah, all trying, yeah, it's like they're all game. trying to be run by you, but you're they're like, no, I want you to be. I'm like, no, no, you're like you're constantly on the run trying to stay away from. That'd them. That'd be so funny. As they're trying to catch you. Yeah, <laughs> that's a thought-provoking catch it question. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't have many good answers for that. Mario trying to get stomped on by Goombas. <laughs> you can't jump; they jump. Yeah. You have to run around. Oh, interesting. Good question, Knucklehead. That sounds like I'm insulting you, but I swear that's your username. All right, Tropical Ice Crow. After playing the Ghost Recon Breakpoint beta on both PS4 and PC, which just came from the beta, is a real contender for my game of the year. I cannot decide on which to buy it on. Have you ever had this problem? And any tips on deciding which platform? One of the outstanding features is with a press of a button during play, you can remove all HUD elements, minimap, mission, and ammo. Yeah, that's cool. Hmm. I've heard, lately I've heard, I have a beta code for it. Um, The way they're handling the codes, you have to go to like the Ghost Recon site, redeem them, and then download it. And my friends, because they gave us four, my friends are having trouble with it, so we were supposed to play it tonight, um, but that will probably be tomorrow. Um, have I ever had an issue of deciding what platform to play on? For me, I look at it this way. My Xbox sits there. I'm sorry, Xbox. You sit there. Um, Switch is portable. PS4 is my social machine. You know, I sit, like, I'll, I'll play games that I can play with my friends, or I'll go on there and talk with my friends while I play a game. And then PC is, is like, review system. Um, just to get the best quality video, if the code is provided for that. I am not picky with, pardon me, I am not picky with platform. I'm just like, give me a code for whatever, and I will I will take it as long as it comes early. That's how I've always approached it. Um, so I don't know if you divide it that way because you're deciding between PS4 and PC. It is a multiplayer game, so I'd suggest you play with where your friends are. Um I, that's how I that's how I decide via platform though in answer to one of your questions. Do you, do you guys ever have this issue or are you just like give me the game? Uh, you want to go first, Kerry? Yeah, I definitely have the issue, but it it, it is almost always um, uh, answered by where people are playing socially. Mm. So, and I'm the opposite of Maddie. Almost, I don't. Other than myself, I don't know anybody who owns a PS4. So it's mostly um, PC and then xbox ps4 is usually for like exclusives for sure um mm -hmm. and certainly if somebody wants to play but it, it's the same way as maddie does it where it's like i look at where my friends are and i'll ask i'm very vocal but it's like what i mean i've sent out emails or the discord yeah if it's i discord, always schedule be like, with my friends yeah it's like where where does everybody think they will be 
and then I sort of go from there. And I'm like Maddie, where uh, when it comes to review code, it's just whatever they give you. You almost, yeah. It's so funny because you'll get people go like, I can't believe you reviewed on blah, blah, blah. And you're all, dude, mm-hmm. half the time I don't have a choice. Like, mm-hmm. I'm just happy to get like, the code. Why don't you play this just... on Xbox? I'm like, that's what they gave me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what am I going to exactly. do? Say no? Give me this? Like, but, <laughs> but I think for me, it's for sure the same. It's social. Definitely social. Mm-hmm. Um. For me, it goes. It's it's going to based on what the title is. Uh, there's certain games I want to. I play more hardcore on when I'm on my computer. Like I actually sitting up, you know, looking. Uh, Halo, Madden, Minecraft. Yeah. I'm gonna play. Or well, Minecraft is kind of both ways, and I rarely play that. It's with friends. Um, those I play on the Xbox because when I play Halo or Madden, I'm trying to chill. You know, I'm not trying to strain my brain. I'm trying to sit in bed or in the chair and chill. But when mm-hmm. I'm playing, you know, something that's very graphic demanding, like, or if it, if I feel like it, like Ghost Recon, I would put that on a PC for me. That's what I would yeah. do. Right. Because I want to get the most out of it I can, whereas something with Madden, I'm like, it's Madden, dude. I don't really care. Yeah. Yeah, I get I, that. Yeah. Yeah, it depends. Like For me, like, as you mentioned, like, you know, this, these are my games for chilling and I have games for chilling, but like my Switch is more of my chill machine, like... I just like laying in bed and playing it because it just. I think part of it's like a comfort thing. Like I just really remember, like laying in bed when I was a kid with the Game Boy Advance SP, laying in bed with the the PSP, like just enjoying the most comfortable spot in my entire house with my favorite gaming systems. And uh, you know the Switch is so, slowly turning into one of my favorite gaming systems, uh, just because of its support and its story and 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 its first party exclusive. It's just been a lot of fun to have. Um, but yeah, that's like the system I view as like the chill machine. It's always been that. Or like if you go over a friend's house, you know, you're sitting on one couch, they're chilling on another, you're just like playing. I don't know. It's just something about it. Comfort. Comfortable. Uh R Jamie. Do you ever get the feeling get the I didn't study for this test feeling, but with video games. For example, I haven't played the Fight for Sanctuary DLC in preparation for Borderlands 3, nor have I finished Gear 4, Gears 4 in preparation for Gears 5. And I've had ample time to do both, but I've been playing other things to prepare for other things. My girlfriend gives me shit because she says I have enough to worry about without having to do homework for video games. Oh, man, this is a good question. That I didn't study for this test feeling with video games. Yeah, it's really hard to, like, sling yourself into a Borderlands 3, which, while it's getting mass marketing and appeal, you really that's a game you really got to know about the previous two entries and the DLC. Not, like, all the DLC. I'll, I'll be the first to say most of Borderlands 2's DLC sucked outside of Tiny Tina. Um, but But when it comes to the actual, like, Fight for Sanctuary DLC, which, by the way, isn't long, you can get away with our, our Jamie. You can get away with with playing that real quick for a couple hours. That's not really homework per se. If you got a few hours to spare, play that. Um, but yeah, man, I I've been there before. That's why, like, when people always ask me, like, dude, you're a big RPG channel. Why aren't you talking about Vampire the Masquerade too? I'm like, I've never played the first one. I, I played it for a few hours. It's a great game. I give people a recommendation, but I never beat it. Why can I? Why would I sit down and talk about that game when I don't know what I'm talking about? Um, you know, so we got to do our homework a little bit more, but your girlfriend, your girlfriend has a point. I'll be honest. She has a point. I don't, I mean, I would say I definitely had it with, uh, Monster Hunter Iceborne. Mm. Um, because I had done Monster Hunter, but then it's like, I started realizing that Iceborne, you know, it's going to be bigger than supposedly bigger than the, it's for the people who are original. Still yeah, and all that, and those certainly pop up where I start looking at it and just being like, you know what, it's just, it's not, it's it's not mm-hmm. gonna work. Like mm-hmm. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be able to dive back into that. Um, and yeah. then if it require, you know, if they're especially with DLC, like even Witcher Three, the DLC for Witcher Three was this massive thing, and sometimes I'll just look at it and be like, I'm just not really interested in jumping mm-hmm. back into that. So it's not really a homework thing, but yeah, uh, just I think sometimes thing. it's like. Are you looking to get into the game because you're interested or do you want to be a part of the fun? Because I've seen, and I don't say that in a douchey way, but I've seen a lot of people, you know, hop into a game series because everyone else is yeah. excited and they're like, I don't get it, you know? Yeah. And, and so that's why I'm just saying, like, you know, are you, are you, in, I'm not deciding for you, but are you actually interested in Borderlands 3 and Gears 5 or is it just because Gears 5 is getting pretty good reviews? A lot of people are talking about, do you just want to get in on that? 
um, or if you had a vested interest. I'd imagine you don't have a vested interest in the franchise because you have not played four. And four was pretty good and, and was met with that's probably like the one of the better reviewed Xbox One exclusives. Um it was a it was a really good game. So that's just my take on it personally. Um we've all been there bo- before and uh if the interest isn't there, then don't push yourself to. It's that yeah, simple. For sure. Cameron, you have any advice for our Jamie? Um I do have one scenario. Uh Okay. <laughs> Um, when I was a kid, I, lo- I fell in love with Halo Combat Evolved. That's probably the first series I was like, man, I love this. Mm-hmm. Like, this is what, that's my first experience with real video games. You know, that, then Mario, but Halo, like, stuck. Um, and I played the first one. And I, I was born way after it came out, so this was not, like, I was getting caught up with the times. Uh, I played the second one, and I wasn't not, I was not able to finish the second one because every time I got to the mission Delta Halo and Halo 2, my game, my disc would mess up, and I could not play anything past that. Forgot about it for years. Halo Three was coming out, and I was like, "Oh man, I want that! I want that!" Played it very first mission. I'm like, "What? How, how did this? How am I here? Like, what mm-hmm. did this happen? You know, uh, it was wild." And mm-hmm. then later, when it was released on uh, the Master Chief Collection, which I loved, it looked had they did a really good job with them. I believe um, redoing one and two, and I was like, "Wow." That was a really, that was a good story, and now I understand more of it. Um, so I wish I would have. So you played one a lot. Oh yeah. Couldn't finish two. You didn't. You didn't like try to get like a new disc or anything at that point. Well, I was like a kid, so I was playing. Oh, with, like, my, okay. I, I thought you were a little older. Like, my, okay. I was playing with like my, I was six or seven, mm-hmm. somewhere around there. Okay, I was yeah. playing like with my dad's Xbox. You know, okay. we would play together, and we did. We were doing all this stuff together, and then Halo Three came out. And I got it, and I was about eight, eight or nine, maybe. And I was like, "What the heck? Like, mm-hmm, <laughs> this mm-hmm. is just wild." Um, that reminds me of when I got uh, Odd Roll Munch's Odyssey because you you said you played with your dad on the original Xbox a lot, and that was how I got introduced to that game. Uh, my dad and I would play that one a ton. I love the Odd World series so much. It's easily one of my favorites. And I often forget about it because there's hardly any entries in it nowadays. We see Soulstorm a little bit, and I believe that's coming early next year, which is exciting. Um, but yeah, I remember when I picked up Stranger's Wrath, thinking it was like a direct sequel or something, and not realizing Odd World is just this wild universe. Uh, and being very confused off the bat with the type of game it was, like this third first person shooter. Um, by the way, just a quick shout out that holy crap, ladies and gentlemen, if you have not played Stranger's Wrath, oh my god, that is such a good game. Yeah, it's a good have game. You guys, have you guys played it? Carrie, you've played it, but... Yeah, I love it. it. Never heard of it. Oof. Yeah. Oh, it's, wow. it's fine. That's that's definitely like an understandable I've never heard of it. It's 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 really <laughs> um, good, but like, Oddworld's such a classic series, right? Like, Abe's Odyssey was a really defining title for the PS1 that I think... I think the guy who worked on it said like they just got lucky, like they feel like it just released at the right time, and they want Soulstorm to be that game that like, really, pardon the pun, takes the world by storm. Um, very fascinating series. Last question comes from Dan. Short list of questions this week. That's okay. What is the worst deal you have done while trading video games? I once traded Sonic the Hedgehog for Mickey's Fantasia on the Mega Drive. Still stinks. <laughs> I love this question because I remembered I texted my friend. I don't have the answer, but I texted my friend and all I know is in return, he gave me the Mario three B three basketball game on the DS, which was like two courts, the same shit gameplay. And I gave him, I want to say it was like MLB, the show 07, I think on the PSP. (laughs) I gave him like a legitimately good sports game and I got this rehashed Nintendo fucking garbage. And that was an awful trade. And I texted him. I could probably look up the date while you guys answer. I texted him recently though. And he had no clue what I was talking about. I don't know what my worst was, but I definitely know what the best was. Let's hear it. Um, So... When I was in middle school, I didn't really know what Fallout was. My friends were playing it, you know. They but they were just like, "Yeah, it was, it's a cool game, it's a cool game." Well, he was like, "I've done, I've played it. I'm kind of tired of it. It's kind of boring." And I had Madden 13, and mm. you know, it was like, I think after 13, Madden 25 came out, like an anniversary or, or fifth was there a fifth? I don't know or four. I don't know. Anyway, 
the game was a, a year out, so I traded Madden 13 for Fallout 3 and the DLC disc you know, like they used to have for like Xbox. Wow. The 360, and I was like, holy crap, Steel. like the value I just got? You know, like, <laughs> looking back now, you know, Madden 13 is probably 10 cent at GameStop, and uh, Fallout 3 is probably a couple dollars, but back in the end, like, I was like, this is like the greatest game I've ever played. Like, oh my gosh, I love this. Um, which I, don't Actually, know I texted him on August 13th, by the way. I just looked. August 13th at 6 p.m., I asked him, what game did I trade you for? I said, you gave me a shitty Mario basketball game. What did I give you? <laughs> I think it was MLB The Show. Yeah, we didn't really trade games much. Really? No, not. I mean, we let people borrow them. You know, but yeah, like, I was usually. Well, like, I used to lend, and then my mom would get pissed because she was like, "Your friends are gonna steal them." Oh, <laughs> and it happened once. I was like, "You sack of shit! Why'd you have to prove it right?" <laughs> yeah, I, I, overall, we didn't. I mean, most of the time, you know, it was it was more along the lines of, you know, do you want to try this this weekend kind of thing, mm -hmm. and then. We also didn't have a huge number of uh, people who had the same systems as I did because I had a Sega Genesis, and at that time it was like Nintendo versus Genesis. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us had differing systems. And then I had a Saturn, they had PS1s. So it, it was more just we didn't always have over. Yeah. So, so we would trade systems sometimes. They would come over and they'd grab the Saturn and I would grab the PS2 or PS1. But you know not really games i remember i've gotten good deals on games uh, from friends like i remember uh i was sitting there during science class and this kid kenny was just like yeah i'm quitting xbox in eighth grade i'm like yeah okay dumbass let's let's see what you're getting rid of then uh and he was just like i'll give you skate 2 and quake on the consoles for seven dollars i was like and at the time like skate 2 was just brand new <laughs> i was like Okay, so I took that off his hands immediately. Um, seven dollars. Yeah, seven dollars. I don't know why. <laughs> that must said that the number just yeah. stuck out. Yeah, more than the trade I, I remember bringing in seven dollars. He was like, "Okay, perfect." So he needed seven dollars for something. Um, you know, but I did him a solid, a very stupid solid too. I I could kick myself the moment I handed him the bag of Yu-Gi-Oh cards that I used to own because he was like, he picked it back up. And I had I had the most fresh fucking collection of Yu-Gi-Oh cards that nowadays would be worth. I probably handed him that day thousands of dollars. <laughs> Ouch! I probably handed him that day. I so I'm the real loser, but holy shit, bro! I handed yes, him like too. Buster Blade, the the Magnet Warriors, Exodia. Holy shit, man! Just countless amazing cards. Maybe they're not as valuable nowadays, but I don't know. I got. I got the Yu-Gi-Oh game that came out on console uh, on Switch rather um, the other day, and it came with some Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So I went to my local card shop and I traded them in because I'm like, I don't play Yu-Gi-Oh, so I'm not going to need these. And I got thirty dollars trading credit for like three cards. So Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh is notoriously, uh, along with Pokemon, really expensive. Uh, oh, the gotcha. physical card game. So I imagine that those cards just held some type of value. Uh, oh, holy sm smokes, man! My other good deal was I. I when I first played Fallout 4, or Fallout 3, rather, um, I paid $20 for it. So, not too bad. Um, yeah, I don't... I, that's the only I just, good deals I've got. I haven't, yeah, I just don't even... I don't even remember a single deal I've even done, really. Mm -hmm. yeah, GameStop like screwed me over a million times, but you know. Well, uh, yeah. I, I'm the man who screwed over GameStop. I take pride in that. I used to, like, obviously I didn't make money and in high school. I didn't have a job. I wanted to do YouTube as a job, so uh, I keep doing that. And what I, I did, because I didn't have money, is I would buy all my games used, and I'd beat them within the week of, and I'd return them and just say that I didn't like it. That was a reason you could use to return the game <laughs> yeah. as long as it was used. And I just kept recycling games at GameStop. So GameStop, oh, and that was what, I think GameStop has decent trade offers now. Like, I could trade in arms. I was just looking the other day which is that, like, Switch Fighter where you use, like, the motion controls and punch at your screen. And you can get, like, $34 for that or something, like, ridiculous. Um, but Nintendo games have a, a higher trade-in value for some reason, but still. Um, yeah, like, I, I, I take pride in the fact that, like, I, I beat GameStop. That's what I say. I GameStop beat. always did bad prices, though. Yeah. I mean, for the longest period of time. How do they screw you over? I'd go in there with... T I remember uh, to get... 
to get Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary Edition, the uh, the remaster. I traded in like all but like two of my games, and I had like when I was a kid, like I had like stacks of games. Like it was like wild. I walked in there and I got eighty dollars worth of credit, and the game was like twenty to uh sixty dollars. Mm-hmm. So then I had twenty dollars left, and I was like, dang man. I mean, it was a great game, uh, and I wouldn't. Yeah, but anything. you felt like you traded a part of your soul when you. Oh when yeah, you like out. I remember. For some reason, I remember Shrek Three, the game. I don't know why, but I loved that game. Like I kept playing that over I and over again. Shrek Two. I don't remember Three. Um, I would kept I kept playing that game. And I, just, I gave it to him for like fifty cent. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> it was wild. It, yeah, oh, at that man. point you're just clearing out. They're they're doing you a fa- they're doing you the favor, clearing out shelf space. <laughs> Yeah, I feel yeah. like if I went up there with now, it's strike three. They'd be like, uh, "You're gonna have to give us the game, your shirt, and twenty mm-hmm. bucks, and we'll think about putting it on the shelf." <laughs> <laughs> you're not wrong right. though, man. They're, they're, some of their prices for trading are so bad. Um, yeah, I was looking at what was I? Because I was looking up trade prices because I had this rack to the left of my TV and it's full. So sometimes I do have to go up to GameStop and just cycle out games I have. I try to make sure I, I, I will never trade in my Vita games and I'll never trade in my Switch games, um, but I was like checking the prices of them anyway. Um, but sometimes I have to cycle them out and I'm trying to think of one I saw that like recently came out within the last couple of months and it's already $11 trade and I'm like, what? Um, I remember I, yeah. going in and they would offer, I, back in the day, they would offer like 49 cents for a yeah. game. Yeah, no, and, because I, oh my god, that reminds and me. And you'd see it for 29 on the shelf or whatever, and I think that's why I never used them, because mm-hmm. we had local places, too, that would trade in, and they always offered better deals. Yeah. So I'd just be like, fuck you, I'm going to, like, even our Blockbuster would buy games, and if they verified really? it work. Yeah, if, if, if they didn't have the game, which, you know, they, they had a lot, but they didn't have them all, they would take the game, they'd verify it work, and then if it did, they, could, they would buy the game from, and they gave you much better prices uh the game spot or GameStop did. Interesting. Yeah, man. I, I remember when I went to get my three sixty, I came like I remember even the employees had like a look of shock. Like I came in with like a box of games, like a ton like my old Xbox, my old PS two just to upgrade to the three sixty and I still had to like take a hundred dollars out of pocket Ouch. at the time to pay for it. Like and I traded away so many games are like, all right uh final fantasy $6 I'm like fuck this is a $320 system I'm like this is not gonna be good (laughs) yeah man they they got me good but I got them back in high school I take pride in that um but that'll be our our final patron question we don't have anything else Cameron we we appreciate you joining the show we hope you had a good time I hope it's as good being a part of it as it is listening it is it was awesome good yeah That's and thank great. or um enjoy your time as uh in the military oh, I <laughs> it sounded you. like are you uh are you going in soon or uh in january i leave uh for basic training i'm joining the reserves gotcha yeah so i'll leave in january january 6th i'll leave and when everything's said and done i'll actually be back at home living my regular life just going on weekends yeah right around this time next year maybe july actually but around this time Nice, nice. It's kind of interesting. We've had uh, just last week, boss said he was doing Air Force. Yeah, yeah. There's been a lot of people uh, going in. Yeah. Is this a recent uh, idea? Uh, I've always wanted to serve. Always, it's always been a passion. I love the country. Uh, cool. But also, I didn't want to stray away from the life that I have right now and fully commit to it. Right. So it's always been in the back of my head, and uh, you know how recruiters are. They always want you know. They never take no. That's always why. It's like, well, yeah. so it mm. took a while to actually get into it. Uh, to after I graduated, probably a couple months, a couple months mm. after, and I was like, you know what? Because I kept telling them, I was like, I'm gonna think about it, and then I'm gonna come in. I came in one day, and they're like, dude, we didn't think you'd come back. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was always something I wanted to do. Uh, finally, getting around to doing it. I also have a uh, a girlfriend going to college, a very serious girlfriend. So. I didn't want to, you know, get shipped to California while she's here for four years. Cause she just started. So. Right, right. Totally um, understandable. It worked out best for me, and uh, I still get to serve at the same time. So it's 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 going to be an interesting journey. Uh, I'm excited, nervous as hell, but still excited. Yeah. Well, best of luck to you, man. And we we yeah for I sure. I don't know sometimes if the right thing to say, but, like we appreciate it. Like we we <laughs> thank you for serving. I, I'm being genuine when I say that. Like I I've always wondered is is there a right terminology to approach that? Because some people have passion for it, some people want to. Some people feel they have to. Um, in your case, oh, yeah. I, I would say thank you. I think. Uh, yeah, 
I appreciate I appreciate it. Um, yeah, certainly more yeah. courage than I, and I appreciate that. Well, I appreciate it. It was it's awesome. It's awesome coming from y'all. Oh, it's our pleasure, man. We're, we're happy to have you on, and uh, we'd love to have you back at some point, maybe like a little bit after your basic training, or if you have like a weekend where you come oh home my or god, something. yeah, to hear the basic training, yeah, stories. Oh, yeah, hear some yeah, stories. Definitely. Yeah, that would be awesome. Get you in here. That'd be awesome. Yeah, for sure. That'd be very cool. Yeah. Twenty twenty people. It's it's going on. All right. Yeah, man. I mean, look, you're, you see how easy I am to get into contact with. So yeah. <laughs> all you got to do is pop me a message. And so long as I get the email notification, I will be right on you like fly on shit. So <laughs> I, I got you covered, man. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, no, we appreciate you, man. So thank you so much for coming on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode 218 of the Ham Radio podcast. And we will catch you guys next week. Peace, Peace out. out.